Okay, we're here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's uh, your buddy Uncle Bruce here from uh, uh, beautiful Palm Desert, California, where it's still dark, dark, dark outside. But you know, it's not as cold as it was the other day. We're into the mid 40s overnight, low instead of the mid 30s. We'll take that. No frost on the grass. Uh, one gal golfers get out to the golf course this morning. Uh, Going to be high 75 today. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, welcome one and all to the show. Um, interesting, as always, always an interesting to start to the day. You never know how the market's going to go. Every day is a new day. It changes every time. Uh, there's just all kinds of um, talk going on right now. First of all, I just noticed a headline a few minutes ago. The um, the private sector added 807,000 jobs in uh, December, uh, ADP says. Um, this is an increase. Uh, the the consensus was around 375, 375,000 jobs were to, were going to be created in December. 807,000 were actually created. Now, we'll find out on Friday the jobs report. Then that, that's day after tomorrow. That'll be the official government take on it, and we'll, we'll see what that's all about. At the moment, though, it looks uh, good. Um, is it a surprise? Well, no. I mean, have you folks noticed the help wanted signs everywhere? Have you folks uh, noticed, those of you who've been trying to fly, um, how uh, <clears throat> it's kind of a pain in the rear end uh, to fly right now, uh, not because of uh, COVID restrictions. No, no, the problem with flying in the U.S. these days is that um, you can't find, uh, like, for example, you go, you go to your airline and you want to check in. Um, the agents might be there and they might take your baggage from you, but uh, your your baggage is, is not going anywhere. I, I, I've heard people who are, I, I met a couple yesterday actually who flew down here, <clears throat> wanted to fly, they wanted to fly down here from Minneapolis uh, a couple of days ago, like four days ago, got to the airport, um, checked in for their flight, got their boarding pass, uh, got to the gate, flight canceled. Uh, they found out once they were waiting, flights canceled. Um, we're told go back to the baggage carousel and get your baggage and then come back tomorrow <laughs> or, you know, good luck to you. So they rebooked for the next day and everything. I don't know how they did it, but they did. It. They went down to baggage, waited five hours, no bags, five hours, uh, because the baggage people, the employees of the airport for the airlines, they're short staffed. They can't, even with flights canceled, you theoretically, they have less work. No, they don't. They have to handle all the baggage. They have to either load a plane up and now unload a plane that's not going to take off and put the bags up. It's as if another plane just came in. Complete mayhem. Uh, they went home without their baggage, came back the next day, got their baggage, and were given heck by airport people. Oh, why did you leave? Because we waited five hours and we're not leaving, waiting anymore for my, our bags. Screw you guys. I mean, you know, what is that attitude anyway uh, from the airport? What is that? Anyway, they checked in again. And this time they made it a uh, direct flight uh, from, from uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul to here. Multiply that story by hundreds of thousands of people uh, in the last week. It's just, it's just been an absolute nightmare in the, uh, in the travel area. <clears throat> the good news for the airlines is that everyone's doing it. So you can't be mad at American. You can't be mad at Delta. You can't be mad at Southwest. You can't be, you know, there's no one airline you can pick on because they're all having problems. Un believable. So the job market, yeah, where where aren't there job openings? Uh, like I said yesterday, one and a half jobs for every American who wants one. Did you know that if you were to, uh, <clears throat> on average, if you were to start working from home, rather than commute to work and back and, and uh, be a remote, you know, now be a remote worker instead of the old school, you know how much money you'll save a year? Average, $4,000 a year is how much you save not going to work to the office, whether it's downtown, is somewhere in the burbs, you got to drive somewhere, or you have to commute somewhere, you are saving an average of eighty dollars a week, not working at the office. For some people, that's a ten percent pay increase. Uh, for some people, that's a five percent pay increase. Remember, I'm talking about four thousand dollars <throat> that you are likely spending out of your after-tax income. This is money you pay to go to work after income taxes are deducted, all your expenses all, you know, off the top of the paycheck. So how much money do you have to make in actual earnings at work to have $4,000 in your pocket net net? <clears throat> For some of you, you've got to generate $7,000 uh, to make four or $6,500 to make four. <clears throat> this is where I'm saying that for some of you out there who are making $60,000 a year, $70,000 a year, 
that's a 10%, that's 10% of your gross income that you have to take off the top. A lot of people don't factor that into their lives when they take a job with company, blah, 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 or company so-and-so. They, they kind of go, oh, I got a $75,000 pay package with benefits, benefits, benefits. Yeah, but you got to take 4,000 off the top, net, net, to get there and back because this doesn't, I don't think this is including anything like, uh, oh, or, you know, during the 10 o'clock morning break, uh, my, my buddy is over here in the office next to me or, you know, my girlfriend is over there. We, we go out for a coffee to Starbucks uh, for a, a half hour coffee break, you know, or a 15 minute coffee break. We go and get our Starbucks coffee and we talk in the lobby a little bit and compare notes. Uh, that coffee is, uh, you know, five bucks, uh, four bucks. Oh, and a little muffin or a little uh, piece of whatever, you know, a little nibble on something. That's another three dollars. You're spending six, seven dollars at Starbucks at least once a day. That's $35 a week. That is $150 a month more again. I mean, that's just one. Uh, what about lunchtime? What about the afternoon break? What about a chocolate bar? How about this? And of course, <laughs> those of you working downtown, uh, wherever downtown is for you, um, you might be near a uh, shopping mall in the downtown core. And the temptation to pick up a new pair of shoes or to uh, try on something or you know, make a purchase uh, spur of the moment, uh, bring something home, um, money out of your pocket after tax money, not deductible. <laughs> Nothing wrong with getting a pair of shoes or, or, or something to wear. What's wrong with that? Nothing, but it, not necessarily a write-off, is it? Um, this is where the average American worker is finding that by not commuting to the office and back, average 4000 a month. Something tells me if you're a car driver, you pay to park your car, gas your car up, it's more than $4,000 a year. I bet you it's closer to eight to $10,000 a year in real money because you've got to factor in some of the mechanic mechanical costs keeping that car running, flat tires, brakes, transmission issues, parking, insurance, on and on and on it goes. Um, there are folks literally saving 10, 15, 20% uh, for, to themselves by not working. And it isn't evident the first week. The first week, you're just kind of, oh, I'm, I'm at home now. I'm not sure what to do. And you're kind of setting up your home office. It's sort of the second, third month. It starts to uh, appear magically. It just little things start to happen. Like you, you, you're you looking at your, your bank account and you go, oh, I have, I have more money. And I have like, I, I usually have like one or 3,000, one to 3,000 dollars in there all the time. I got like five grand in there. I got six grand in there. I, I got 7,000 in there. How come I have this money? Where isn't it going? The bleed rate has stopped. Uh, sometimes you get rich by not spending money. My father used to say, uh, and he was told this by many people, it's not how much money you make sometimes. It's how much you spend. That's how determines how wealthy you are. You can be a very poor person making $20,000 a year, but if you only spend 5,000 a year to live, you save 15,000 a year. There are people making 150,000 a year that can't save $15,000 a year. There's people making a quarter million a year can't save 15,000 a year. It's a question of what you spend and uh, what you spend it on. It's amazing. Uh, the home work environment thing has really transformed itself in the last six months. The first six months, a year and a bit ago, it was cute and all, it was unique and all. Then it kind of became more of a, oh, wow, this is going to be around a little longer. And now in the last six months, people are going, this is a game changer for me. I have more time with my my uh, my better half, my, 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 my soulmate. I have time for my kids. I have time for my pets. My pets and I have a new relationship. I'm always here. My pets and I have a daily walk routine now. Uh, I have a walk routine. I I have changed my lifestyle completely. I don't eat as much junk food anymore. I don't go to that food court at the office complex anymore. Um, I miss some of those dishes I used to love having all the time, but I, I've changed everything. Um, welcome to the new world, everybody. Um, if I can help you in this new world, I'm happy to do it. Um, uh, very exciting stuff. Uh, what was I going to tell you? Oh, uh, what's going to happen in the markets? Oh my gosh. Uh, we're, we're up three on the Dow. We're, we're down three on S&P. We're down 68 on NASDAQ. 
Uh, a lot of talk again, again, and again about what's going to happen this year and what are we going to look forward to. And, and later today, we're going to get the minutes from the Fed meeting. Um, and everyone's wondering, oh, what are they talking about in the Fed meeting? Are they going to accelerate the taper? Are they going to accelerate interest rate rises? What's going to happen? Um, there is $9 trillion of bonds what's known as on the books of the Fed. Uh, what does that mean? It, it means that the Federal Reserve has purchased bonds that have been issued out there by municipalities, states, the United States government, corporations. The Fed over years and years and years and years and years, like a decade or more, has been buying up bonds to take bonds off the market, uh, the regular market, and um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, bond prices have stayed high, which means interest rates are staying low. If bond prices are low, that means yields are higher. Give an example. If I borrow $1,000 from you and I pay you 10% interest, you get $100 a year in interest from me. And if you're happy with my uh, payment schedule and you consider me a solid uh, guy that's good for the money, you're, get, you're getting 10% on your dough. Now, someone else comes to you, your relative of yours says to you, hey, listen, uh, um, I hear you lent, uh, you lent Uncle Bruce $1,000. Um, listen, uh, I, I got 1000 bucks I want to put to work. Um, what if I give you $1,100 for that $1,000? In other words, I'll give you the 1000 plus a year of interest up front. Uh, to take over that loan, he'll now pay me $100. And the first year that he'll pay me $100, that breaks me even again, gets me down to $1,000. And after that, I'm making 10% yield after that. Or I'm getting $100 on an $1,100 investment. So you are selling a loan that you're getting 10% yield on to this guy, this relative, for an $1,100 gain. So you made 100 quick dollars and you got your thousand, you got $1,100 in your pocket. You're happy, you're moving on. The new relative that I owe money to, I only owe that, rel I only owe that relative $1,000, but that relative paid $1,100 for my debt. Uh, so they're only getting 9% on the money ballpark. Uh, but they're happy with 9% yield because I'm good for it, you see. Uh, but then I, I get on tough times. You see, I, I make so many of you angry at me that my numbers on YouTube collapse and, and I don't make money anymore. So all of a sudden I'm having trouble making my $100 payments uh, in interest to this guy. And so this guy is getting frustrated and worried that, oh, gee, Bruce can't pay his bills anymore. So I'm going to sell the, I want to get rid of the loan. So he goes back to the first uh, lender say, hey, do you want to buy back this loan? And that lender says, ah, yeah, I'm not so keen on it because um, I know Bruce, Bruce is having a tough time because he's he's upsetting his viewers. <laughs> uh, so that he goes to another viewer, another relative who says, yeah, I heard he's having a tough time. But I'll tell you what, I'll give you 500 bucks for that $1,000 loan that he owes you because Bruce is only paying interest. He's only paying the $100 in interest. And so this guy's so desperate, he sells the loan to this guy for $500. And that person is supposed to collect from me $100 a year in interest because I owe that person $1,000. That's how much I borrowed. I owe $1,000. Um, and so now I'm, I'm paying that person $100 a year. And if I pay it, that person is making 20% interest on the on their money because they only put up 500 bucks to get my to get my hundred dollar uh interest payment and at the end of the loan term if it's a five-year deal i owe that person a thousand dollars so that that's how the bond market works okay so the bond market is always twitchy so if, if the go back to scenario number one the first person who's getting 10 percent interest um uh, they're happy with me and everything's great but all of a sudden they find out that interest rates are going up all around the world and uh, they can get a five-year GIC guaranteed investment certificate over at their local bank and the bank is paying them 15 percent interest for the next five years if you lock up your money for five years all of a sudden my deal isn't so good anymore I'm paying 10 percent interest but they can get 15 from the bank and the bank is even better than I am which is unbelievable to think that a bank would have a better credit rating than a youtuber like me I mean come on in any event they might say, wow, I, I want to get rid of this guy's loan. I want to, I want to get rid of this. Uh, I can't make him give me a thousand because I signed a deal that he owes me this money in five years. So Bruce, as long as Bruce is paying his interest, I can't force him out. So they try to sell the loan to somebody else. And so they, they sell the loan to another relative or friend of theirs for $900. And uh, they take a hundred dollar hit, but they've already got a hundred in interest, you see. And so they've got 1100 in their hand and 
you know, they're getting 900. And so they get rid of me and pass it off to someone else. So someone paid 900 to, to get $100 in interest. It's almost 11% interest for them. And this individual is taking the $900, adding 100 more to it, going to the bank, giving them 1,000 bucks and getting 15% interest. So they're happy. They're making 5% more money on their money. The, the new person that bought my debt, fairly happy. They're getting 11% of their money. Uh, and I'm just paying 10% like I always pay. This is how the bond market works. Well, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, is grandpa. <laughs> grandma and grandpa have all the money. They always do have all the money. And grandma and grandpa is where the kids go when the kids need help. So grandma and grandpa are trying to keep the family alive and keep the, grand, the children happy and the grandchildren happy and everybody okay happy. All right, so now what happens is uh, you have a, a, an economic slowdown. <laughs> so... Um, Uncle Bruce, he's okay on YouTube. He's doing what he's doing on YouTube. He can pay this interest of $1,000 a year on this $1,000. But the person who lent Bruce the money, Auntie whatever, uh, Auntie Sadie lent Bruce $1,000 and Bruce is paying her $1,000 a year, $100 a year in interest. She needs the $1,000. She Her car broke down and she needs the $1,000 to put, to put to work. And so grandma and grandpa come around and say, uh, we'll give you $1,000 for that $1,000 uh, uh, loan. And then Bruce will just owe us the money. And uh, now you have a thousand bucks in your hand. Go get your car fixed. Because with your car being fixed, you can get to work. And by getting to work, you can make money. And that keeps the economy going within the family, you see. Because Auntie Sadie also looks after so-and-so's kids. And she can't get to the kids without a car. And, and the whole family structure is all screwed up if Auntie Sadie isn't mobile. So Auntie Sadie gets $1,000 from Grandma and Grandpa. Grandma and Grandpa now own my debt. Grandma and Grandpa now buying debts from everybody in the family. They, you know, this person lent money to that person. This person lent money to that person. Grandma and Grandpa are buying all the loans up. And so the family members are getting cash, cash, cash for these loan assets. And they now can put that money into the economy uh, to, you know, fix uh, fix plumbing, uh, keep their houses running, um, whatever they need to do to keep life going. Some have got laid off. Now they have some money that they, they will let this person $5,000. They're now getting five grand from grandma, grandpa, that pays their bills for a couple of months. Keep keeping the heat off of the, the structure of the family economy. And it's because grandma and grandpa have a million bucks in the bank and they're now using a hundred thousand dollars of their personal savings to buy up all the family loans within the family structure to keep the family going calmly. Now, after three years, four years, five years, I have to pay my $1,000 loan back. Um, I go to my relative, to Aunt Sadie, and say, I have $1,000 for you. And Aunt Sadie says, oh, you don't give it to me. I sold your loan to Grandma and Grandpa. Give the 1000 to them. Oh, okay. I go to Grandma and Grandpa. I come up. I come to them with $1,000, and they say to me, do you, do you still need that money for what it is you're doing? And I say, yeah, I need new lighting for my channel because my viewers tell me I have pot marks all over my face, and I need new, new lighting angles. Uh, they say, well, uh, we'll give you a new loan, uh, but you're such a good credit risk. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll charge you 5%. Just give us $50 a year in interest and keep the thousand bucks. And we'll just, we'll, you owe us this money in five years. And so that's what I do. I, I have lowered my interest expenses to $50 a year and I'm a happy guy. I go and, and use this money that I've saved up to pay back. And I now continue to spend money in the economy to keep my channel rolling right along. And everything, everything is great in my little world. And, and this is what the Fed does. The Fed has been buying up everyone's debt. And so your car loans and mortgages and um, industrial other loans, share buyback loans, um, government debt from the city of Peoria, um, state debt from Colorado, uh, um, you know, subway line expansion in New York, those bonds that were issued, water system loans, uh, all this stuff, infrastructure loans, all picked up by the Fed. They've just been buying it. They're now sitting on $9 trillion of debt. The Fed owns $9 trillion, with a T, of debt. What does that mean to you and me and the markets? Well, they want to offload that. They want, it's time for them to, uh, they want that those loans to go out into the economy now to be held by people who have cash to start earning interest on their money. But the Fed knows that, um, are you interested in buying uh, $10,000 of debt from the Fed and getting a quarter percent return every year on your money? 
You're not interested in that, are you? No, not the rumors. Our interest rates are going higher. Why would you want to put your money into a GIC for five years and get a quarter of a point or a half a point? Why would any bank buy the debt from the government uh, for a half a percent of interest rate, a half a percent interest rate per year? There's nothing in it. Now, as each year goes by, uh, the Fed, if they did nothing, I mean, theoretically, if they did nothing, this $9 trillion will shrink because the debt matures. Eventually, it matures. And um, uh, entities need to raise fresh cash. Like the other day, I talked to you about Royal Caribbean. They want to raise $700 million more million this year. They're going to do that like now uh, because they want to pay off debt that they owe already. Well, I think they have a $500 million debt obligation they took out five or six or seven years ago at maybe 4% interest, 3%, whatever it is. They have to pay off that principal this, this month, $500 million. Well, instead of paying off the $500 million from operations, they don't have it from operations, they're going to borrow $500 million again from someone else to then pay this banker off and just roll over the debt. It's like, a, like an option rollover, going to roll over the debt going forward. So what they're doing is they're borrowing now $700 million instead of $500 million. And they're giving the broker an option for probably another 10% above that. So that's another $70 million. So they're probably going to raise $770 million, pay $500 million in old debt off and roll it over. And um, uh, now they owe somebody else $770 million, by the way. They now owe you know the banker $770 million, but that five hundred dollars of that is old debt that disappears. So they're only taking on $270 million of new additional debt at whatever rate they have to pay. And um, they have $270 million to pay out the commissions to raise the money, the legals to file it all. And then there might be $150 million left over, $170 million left over, whatever it is, into the general pot, into the corporate bank account to just pay bills and keep on going. And that's what's going on. And uh, the Fed is not the buyer of that debt. Whoever the buyer of that debt is could be a consortium of pension funds, hedge funds, mutual funds, ETFs individual investors, well-to-do, um, friends of the cruise line, suppliers of the cruise line. I mean, people who know the cruise line that they're good for. It. Um, could also be the existing banker that's being paid out. The banker that's pay getting paid off might take 200 million of that 500 million and, and reinvest and, and put give them 200 of the 770 million they need. They, don't, they can't lend them 770 million, but they can lend them 200. So they need 300 in cash and they'll give them 200 back uh, to roll over themselves. Uh, but the master, the, the, the lead broker, that is the investment banker that is raising the 770 million, they're finding the 770 million for the cruise line. And that's how this is done. And the Fed has been there to buy debt already issued. Like I said, like grandma and grandpa bought Aunt Sadie's debt, I owe her. It's being done now for over 15 years and it's been accelerating the last number of years since about 2010, 11, and 12. And now they're deciding economy has got lots of cash. Uh, corporate America sitting on trillions of dollars. Individual Americans are sitting on trillions of dollars. Uh, there's a lot of dough in the system right now. We can slowly unload some of this debt into the bond market. And that's what they'll do. They'll sell debt. The city of Cincinnati a sewage treatment plant debt for $50 million will be sold into the bond market and the Fed will uh, likely break even on it, make a little on it. They've got interest on it already and it still, have, it still has eight years to go before it's due to be paid off in full. And now the city of Cincinnati is still on the hook for the amount of money they borrowed at whatever interest rate they're paying. It's just that the owner of that debt is somebody else now, not the Fed, Federal Reserve. And the city of Pittsburgh's debt is sold off. And the, the state of Pennsylvania debt is paid off. And Apple, uh, Apple bonds that were used to buy back stock five years ago that still has three years to go before it matures, that's being sold off. And so the Fed is unwinding their balance sheets going forward starting in March of this year, bit by bit by bit. And it's only $10 billion a month on a nine trillion dollar balance. I don't want you to get the impression that nine trillion dollars of debt is going to come into the market in three weeks. It's going to take a decade to offload it. And that's assuming the market can absorb it. And there goes the game. Now, if there's more debt available for the bond market to buy than before, guess what happens to bond prices? 
you have more sellers than buyers, bond prices go down. If bond prices go down, that means yields, the cost of interest, goes up. And this is what everyone's afraid of. Everyone is petrified about the bond market being flooded with a lot of debt that is held by central bankers around the world. The Bank of Canada sitting on a trillion at least. Europe, European Central Bank, trillions of debt sitting over there. Bank of Japan, trillions of debt sitting there. They bought it all up. The central bankers of the world have been supporting the world economy by buying up debt to keep interest rates low, to keep us motivated to spend, 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 and expand. They've been trying to get us off our butts and get going. The problem is that we've had a, tr we've had a little problem getting off our butts because there's this virus uh, keeping us in the house. Uh, a lot of us would like to be out there traveling and doing deals. And so certain factors, sectors of the economy are not working too well. Other sectors are doing just great. Um, and so it's a mixed bag here. So if the, var the variant thing and the virus thing were to calm down, in other words, if everybody were to get vaccinated, uh, the economy would light up um, and um, the uh, central bankers can easily ease debt back into the economy where it belongs because the economy will be desperate to find it. There'll be bankers going, I'm sitting on trillions of dollars of cash. I need to buy debt. I, I need to earn interest on my money. Uh, the only place I can go to park money overnight is the Federal Reserve on the overnight window. And then the next morning I take it out and I lend it again. Uh, but if those dollars keep rising, the amounts, they need more debt. So the, the Fed will take will accommodate. They'll be very accommodative and they will offer debt for sale. Whatever kind of debt you want. You want triple A debt? I got triple A United States government debt. You want uh, a double A debt? I got states. You want single A debt? I got cities. You got uh, you want triple B debt? I've got corporate debt. Uh, it, uh, certain companies have triple, you know, tri class A rating debt. Some have B debt. The Fed's sitting on all kinds of it. T Nine trillion dollars. Europe, probably just as much. And so there's, there could be fifty trillion, thirty trillion dollars of debt out there that would like to go back into the private sector over the next decade if the private sector can absorb it without hurting the economy of the private sector. And this is where we ask ourselves, well, oh, geez, you know, if, uh, if interest rates go up to 4 or 5%, uh, can I afford the house I have? Can we afford as a young family to move up to a larger house in five years if interest rates go up to 6 7%? If I have a mortgage, instead of being 2% or 3% now is 6 or 7%, could we afford the payment? What will the economy be like? Would we be laid off? What's going to happen to us? And this is these are the questions that's being asked all around the world every week, every day, every month, and has been for generations. And my parents, my mom and dad used to ask the question, yeah, we got a mortgage right now at 8%. Um, and now a new mortgage in two years when our mortgage you know, rolls over, uh, rates right now are 11 and a half. Um, what's our mortgage payment going to be? Well, the good news is that we borrowed uh, $25,000 from our banker when the house was $30,000, and we only owe them $22,000. So we only have to roll over a $22,000 mortgage with higher rates rather than rolling over the original $25,000 mortgage. We paid it down by 10%. So we're paying higher interest rates, but on a lower amount of money. So our payments might be about the same or a, t a tad higher, but not too much. Well, inflation has uh, allowed them to earn more money every year because their paychecks have gone up with inflation. But um, so is their tax rates because they are now in higher tax brackets because the government didn't change the tax brackets. They let people slip into higher tax brackets by not changing the tax uh, rate bracket. They didn't move it. Um, and so th there's this back and forth battle to stay ahead and, and stay alive uh, going on all the time. But for a young family that needed to go from a two bedroom house to a four bedroom house, with a one-car garage to a two-car garage, um, they were looking at a real nightmare scenario because <coughs> they used to be two two incomes, no kids. Now they're one income, two kids. Uh, uh oh, uh, how are we going to move up to a larger house? Uh, the first house we bought was fifteen thousand dollars. Now we owe twelve thousand on it. We want to buy a thirty thousand dollars house. Whoops, our house is worth more money. Then when we paid for it, yeah, we bought it for 15, it's worth 20, and we have a little equity in there, but do we have enough equity to put down on the new house to be able to afford the new mortgage at a higher interest rate? And here is the 
back and forth and back and forth of life that you go through as you age into life, as you come out of your teenage years, into your 20s, into your 30s, into your 40s. This is the way it works. That's why the bond market is a big freaking deal. It is a really big freaking deal. And um, uh, the bond traders are the nervous ninnies uh, of the world because they are handling and sitting on tens of trillions, a hundred trillion dollars of debt globally and a one-tenth of one percent interest rate move on ten, one hundred trillion dollars is a lot of friggin' money. And so, yeah, these folks are, you darn right they're nervous uh, because uh, a half a point move, half an interest rate point move for some people knocks them out of the mortgage business. Um, it might be from that six to six and a half percent point. It might be from seven to seven and a half, or it might be from nine and a half to 10 percent interest. There's a point in time somewhere for all of us where the next interest rate go move that goes higher by half a point knocks us out credit rating wise from qualifying for loans, whatever the loan's for. And this is multiplied by billions of people on the planet and governments and governments and corporations. And so this, this is a big thing. Welcome to the markets 101. Um, we're up, uh, we're not up. We're down 11 on the Dow. We're down four in S&P. We're down 69 on NASDAQ. Am I worried about being down 11, four and 69 points? Uh, no, uh, this is a nothing burger. This is hardly an issue to worry about. These are, these are nothing, nothing burger moves in the pre-market. But I'm kind of glad to see it. Now, why would a guy in a black uh, uh, sweatshirt with a stock market Bruce logo on it, available at Redbubble, Redbubble, by the way, why would a guy like that be not nervous uh, on a day like that? I'll tell you why. Um, have you noticed lately where in the last two weeks uh, the markets start higher and then they end up lower at the end of the day or your, your shares on like Matterport are up 50, 80 cents in the pre-market and at the end of the day, they're down a dollar twenty on the day? Well, maybe we should sh change it up a little bit. Why don't we start with a dip first, and then have profit to uh, have bargain hunting coming in all day long, and we'll have a we'll have an uprise. Let's let's change it up because um, the old one hasn't been working too well for us on a bunch of our stocks. It's time for a shakeup on this market. I think the shakeout has happened on a lot of our stocks already with respect to tax loss selling. Uh, we now need a little more uh, a little more reality to come into this market. Now today I am announcing. Big news today. <laughs> um, I'm beginning to lean towards um, writing options on GameStop, even though it's only at $148 a share. Uh, we're down 94 cents in the pre-market. There's nothing going on at the moment. 6,400 traded, very quiet. I want to see the opening in the first 20, 30 minutes today. And what I'm hoping for, I got my fingers crossed. I'm hoping that the shares will pop into the 150 level, 152 level. If it got higher than that, I'd be thrilled beyond belief. But uh, if it only wants to do this 148 to 152 neighborhood, so be it. Um, it is time for GameStop to pay us for being loyal shareholders of this company again. And it is now time to consider the possibility of writing call options on the stock. But I will give the stock every chance this morning to show me something that we shouldn't be writing calls at this point in time. Now, as I'm speaking, just as I'm speaking to you, it just popped to 148.85. It just jumped here. Uh, it's only down six cents, but it did just pop up, but uh, it's still only 6,500 volume. There's no wave of buying support dying to come into the stock uh, at this point in time. So if the shares wanna go to this 152, 155 neighborhood, then I will tell you folks to start writing at the money call options for this Friday. Start looking at 155s, 157.50s, 160s. If the shares want to sit in this 148 to 150 range after 30 minutes of trading and that's all they got in them, then start look, look to write 150s for Friday or 152.50s. If the shares want to be in the 144, 147 range, we're going to start looking at writing 148s, 149s, 150s because under $150 for this Friday, you can write them in $1 increments. Above 150 bucks, it's a 250 incremental price move. So you can write options at 150, 150, 250, 155, 157, 50, 160. But under 150, you can write 149s, 148s, 147s, 146s, but only for this Friday. For next Friday, you can write them in $2.50 increments. If you want to write contracts for next Friday or the Friday after that, and I don't 
discourage you from considering it, then take a look at writing. Uh, if the shares, again, are going to be in this 150 neighborhood, then take a look at writing 155s, 160s for next Friday. Um, if the shares move up to 152, 155, take a look at 160, 65s for next Friday. Um, but what I'm after here is if you can write a contract today that can get you at least $3 in premium, that's a dollar a day in premium between now and Friday's close. And that equals $5 a week in premium or $10 every two weeks in premium. And I want you to be paid a dollar a day to hold this stock. I want you to earn a dollar a day to park GameStop in your account. If you have 100 shares, you should be making $100 a day in depreciation on this stock. That's what you're, that's what you're owed. That is what should be, that's the obligation that should be made to you at these prices with this risk. So we're going to take a look at these contracts as we start trading here this morning. We're going to keep an eye on the stock performance, how it wants to go, the volume, any news. It's 148.45 right now. It's down 46 cents. We'll see what the stock gives. The stock is going to tell us what to do. Stock wants to open up higher. We're writing higher price contracts. Stock wants to open flat. We'll, we'll write contracts around here. Stock wants to be down a little bit. We'll write contracts down there. It's time to be paid to do this. I am not afraid of the stock popping up 15, 20 bucks in the next two days. It wants to go ahead and do that. Fine. Go ahead. Go up. Go up uh, 5, 10, 15 dollars a share. Uh, go right ahead. We'll roll over. We'll do rollovers into next week or the week after or the week after. Not a problem because there are plenty of contracts we can write on GameStop at plenty of prices for wonderful premiums. And if the shares do pop up, to 158, 168, the premiums pop up. They grow. Premiums get higher on, on GameStop stock the higher it starts to move, which works for you because you're a writer. You're a seller. Now, this morning, keep an eye on this opening. And then when we do enter orders, I'm going to caution you, stink offers. You want to offer a contract or two or five or whatever number of contracts you're going to write at a higher price than what they're trading at. If the market is moving a little bit higher, we're going to say something like, let's say the contract is uh, priced at 340 to 375. That's the bid ask, 340, 375. You're not going to waltz in there and hit the 340 bid. An idiot does that. You don't, you're not going to do that. You're going to offer contracts at 395, 385, even above the offer. You're going to be up there. The market is, is moving up a little bit. Let it keep moving and then come and get you, take you out, just like we did last earlier this week and last week, let the market come and get you and uh, you get the price you want for your contract. Then you can turn around where as soon as you get out, as soon as you get your option written, you're going to put in a stink buy order. And if you get out, it's 395. You might put in a stink buy order at 105 and leave it there for the rest of the week. This contract dies on Friday. If it's a contract that dies next week, Friday, and you can sell it for 885 or something like that, 890, whatever the Whatever price it is. But if there's a contract you can sell up at that level, again, about a buck a day, um, you might put in a buyer at 405, 305, and you might get that today or tomorrow or Friday. You don't have to wait necessarily eight days to get taken out with a $4 profit. You might make a $4 profit, a $5 profit on a contract in two and a half, three and a half days instead of five days. And that way you're making a dollar a day in, you're making more than a dollar a day in three days. And that's a good thing. You end up, you end up making a five dollar return. That's a dollar sixty a day. Thank you very much. I love being here. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the GameStop today. It's pay, it's payback time, and uh, we've been patient enough, and we've been kind enough, and we've been uh, just wonderful investors. Now we want to be paid for our time um, and our investment. It's time for us to be paid. Uh, let's take a look at some other possible scenarios that we're going to be taking a look at here. We have twenty one minutes to go before we open up. And let's talk about some other options scenarios that we can look at. Let me just get my watch list to pop up, pop up here. I want to double check where we are on the pre-market. We're down nine points on the Dow, one and a half on S&P. We're down 53 on NASDAQ. Um, all righty. Uh, Rocket Lab is 1166. Looks like it's unchanged. We have SoFi sitting at 1491, down 15. It was down about 30 cents earlier. Now it's down 15. It looks like it's going to open on uh, kind of unchanged around that 15 neighborhood. GameStop is, uh, like I said, down 47 cents to 148.44. We've got uh, Matterport down 42 cents in the pre market to 17.80. Um, I'm going to tell you guys that it might be time to write contracts against our Matterport, even though we're trading at 1780 in the pre-market. We'll, we'll see how the market actually opens in real, in real life when we start trading. But if we open up in this 18 to 1850 neighborhood, 
I'm going to tell you, you might want to write 20 or 2250s for this January the 17th, because I think that the, the Matterport contracts will be um, uh, uh, expire coming up on, if I recall, January the 17th. And uh, since they're only monthlies, let me double, triple check. Uh, Jan 21, pardon me, Jan 21. All right, so it's not this Friday. This Friday is the 7th. The 14th is the next Friday, the 21st. So it's two ha and a half weeks. Uh, writing a $20 call last night at the bell would have re re returned you about 75 cents to 80 cents approximately. If you would have written a 2250 at the bell last night, you would have received about 35 to 40 cents. We're going to find out this morning how much lower they are when we open this morning, if we open down. If we do open in the first 20, 30 minutes in this 1780 to 1820 level, this is about where the contracts will likely be, maybe a tad lower. But if we can have a bit of a rally and we get to this 1850, 1875, uh, maybe a uh, uh, sorry, yeah, 1850 range. If we can go to 1850, something like that. These contracts will be here or a little above here. In other words, you might get about a dollar for a $20 contract. It might get about 50, 60 cents for a 2250. I'm saying we take the dollar off the $20 table because they're handing it to us. Now, a 1750 contract last night was 165 to 180. Uh, with the stock last night at 1820, just to give you an idea. Uh, theoretically, you can write 1750s. I don't particularly want to do anything under 20, but we'll see how this market reacts. Again, if we do in the first half hour, 45 minutes, have a bit of a rally after a little dip, we do have a rally into this market and the stock wants to get back to the 19, 19 a quarter neighborhood, the 20s will likely reach a buck 20 or so, uh, the 2250s will likely reach 70, 80 cents. And again, 2250s might be the way to go where you're just gonna write them for 75, 80 cents, 79 cents, 84 cents, and you're gonna buy them back at about 20, 23 cents a piece. The, the 20s, if you sell them for a buck 50, you're gonna try to buy them back at about 60, 61 cents a piece. Um, in theory, you could try to write 1750s if the stock does go up a little bit higher it goes into the $19 level these 1750s will buck will be a buck 50 in the money plus probably a dollar of premium you'll get 250 and if the stock backs off a little bit you can score a $1 or $1.50 return uh, on a quick buyback on 1750s we're going to look into that and study it closely okay that is what we're going to probably do let me take another peek at some other situations here. It's time to be paid. It's time to get paid. Um, where else are we at with contract writing? Uh, I'll take a look at some of our faves. Apple, down 29 cents at the moment, um, 179.41. Yesterday, we hit that high level. Uh, as we were talking about, we, we reached the 182.94 range. We brought down the house with a $3 trillion market cap print for a five-minute time frame yada yada it's all over um now the question is where is the stock going from here i see resistance at 182 183 and 184. so if you're thinking of writing poor man covered calls if you don't own 100 shares of apple or more if you have uh, deep in the money contracts then i would be looking at writing apple contracts at like 183 84 85 for perhaps Friday, but more likely next Friday. If you want to write contracts for the Friday after that and get a little more premium in your pocket, then take a look at writing 182s to 185s for uh, two weeks Friday. That's what I would be looking at on Apple. Um, other stocks to look into, uh, let's talk about um, Goldman Sachs. We're up 188 right now at 409.36 this morning. Um, we're higher than yesterday's close. Yes. Are we aggressively higher? No. Are we incredibly high volume higher? No. 14,000 traded so far this morning in the pre-market. Goldman Sachs is uh, got a dead cat uh, continuance going on from its yesterday's day, but we were as high as 410.28 yesterday. Then we're only 409.37 on the pre-market. Uh, something is telling me we might be topped out for a bit, and something else is telling me to see a pullback to 400 would not be unusual, not be unreasonable, and it could happen as early as today or tomorrow. So again, Goldman stock, Goldman Sachs shares. You could write calls that expire Friday in the 410. 
to 415 neighborhoods, something in that ballpark, in that range overall. Um, taking a look at the options right at the moment, I noticed uh, that here in this 400 neighborhood, you can write 400s, 40250s, 405s, 410s, 415s, 420s, and 425s. So they go 250 a piece up to 405. They go $5 a piece at 410 and higher. So if you're looking to write a 410 contract uh, last night, you would have received about 261 for a contract that dies this Friday, but the stock's up $1.88 in the pre-market right now, so these contracts are likely pushing more like 280 to 290, maybe three bucks. The, the 415s for this Friday are probably gonna trade around 4, 150 or so. If you wanna write contracts for next week, Friday, January 14 expiring, 410s will get you in over $5. You might get 550 to six bucks for a 410. I would push you in that direction. 4.15s to be ahead of the market. Um, if you if the stock wants to pop up to 4.10 or 4.11 this morning, 4.15s may bring you closer to five bucks to six bucks. I'd write those. And then just put in stink bids for uh, say 60% less than what you sold it for uh, to make a nice little score. You might get it today. You might get it tomorrow, uh, depending on whether it's this Friday or next Friday. And again, how the stock does between then and then. All right, 409.89 right now, we're up 275. As we're coming into the opening here, 14 minutes away, it is strengthening a little bit more. It's a morning pop on Goldman that might be available to you, where you might be able to write as much as a 410, 15, maybe even a 420 contract if you go two and a half weeks out. But we'll have to watch and see that. All right, there's some of your uh, scenarios on Tesla. If you wanna do anything on Tesla, if you're, you've got the kind of capital where you can write anything on Tesla, that stock right now, 1144 down 482. Uh, I'd be looking at uh, possibly watching the opening to see if there's any kind of a, an additional rally today. Um, if there is, fine. If there isn't, uh, sits in this, you know, 440 neighborhood, 11, 4, 1140 to 1100. 50 range, then I'd look at 1160s, 1170s for either this Friday or next Friday, uh, looking for, a, again, a premium depreciation play is what you want to be looking for. You want to be out of the money and you want to enjoy some uh, premium uh, depreciation. Shrinkage, as we like to call it, uh, sh the George Costanza trade is what we're looking for right now. We're looking for the George Costanza trade, pure shrinkage, I was in the pool um, and uh, we want to sell high, uh, let the contract evaporate uh, because of the uh, shrinkage factor. Uh, and that's how we want to play this uh, this market today. So we'll see what uh, what it's given us. It is it is Wednesday. And oh, by the way, I will be on the air tonight at um, eight o'clock Eastern time. I'll be live tonight at eight o'clock Eastern time for Gold Bagel members only. Um, eight o'clock this evening. It's a Q and A show. Ask me anything you want. Uh, we'll talk about your trading this week. Talk about trades you might want to do uh, uh, next week uh, or later this week. We'll see what's going on. And again, uh, I thank all of you who have already become Gold Bagel members of this channel. You not only get to join me Wednesday in the evening at eight o'clock. You also get to join me every morning before this live show for a gold bagel member investor alert update, which I'm now offering every day the markets are open um, as an add-on for gold bagel members. Thank you all of you who have become gold bagel members um, and I hope more of you become uh, will be choose to become one. I think it's worth your while to do it, to consider it um, uh, because from time to time we come up some real with some real gems here. If today you're able to write a poor man covered call on Goldman and uh, you can bring in $600 in premium and buy the, uh, the call back at uh, $4 a share later today and make a quick $200, that will cover eight months of your membership to this channel. Uh, at the gold level. I mean, it's it's one trade. You can do this for the rest of your life. Um, hopefully, I've helped you uh, make some money. And, uh, and those of you who've taken my classes, I know for a fact you are definitely ahead of the game now. You're far more knowledgeable than you were, ever were on options. And it shows because the kind of comments that we're getting here uh, between members who are playing, who are talking to each other, whether they're uh, uh, um, 
uh, chilling with Uncle Bruce members or whether they're Gold Bagel members. Uh, they're here commenting, talking to each other. They're comparing notes. It's worth your while to join this channel and be part of this chat and be part of this family because these folks here are learning and sharing what they're learning with each other. And we are getting smarter and smarter with how to return money into our pocket with a good market, a lousy market, or a flat market. Uh, why make money in the market only when stocks go up? Why not make money in the market whatever the market wants to do? Uh, that's, that's my philosophy on this thing. Um, you can try to guess the mother of all short squeezes every day of your life. Knock yourself out. But the reality is um, you want to pay bills in the meantime, you're going to write options. You can do this by writing options. You can theoretically, depending on how much money you're using in your portfolio, you can say goodbye to your day job and join the mass exodus of four and a half million people a month that are saying goodbye to their employer. I'm going to do something else. Um, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. Um, Let's make some dough. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, again, thank you for taking the lessons. Thank you for those of you who are becoming gold members, uh, regular members of this channel, and uh, those of you who make donations to us from time to time. We love you, especially when you're making PayPal donations. Oh, gosh, do we love you for that. Uh, let's see if we can make some money today. Uh, we're down to nine minutes to go before we start trading. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, your options, whatever, let me know. I'll see what I can uh, see what I can do if I can answer your questions. By the way, if you are giving us a thumbs up today, please let me know, like Credit Savage, what uh, what number are you? Uh, what thumbs up number are you? Uh, Credit Savage is number 160. Thank you for uh, becoming uh, uh, coming into this channel and giving us thumbs up. So you have already got 178 thumbs ups already. We haven't even opened yet. Now we're at 181. If you're able to hit that thumbs up button, please nail that sucker for us. Because what happens here is simple. Every time I get a thumbs up, the YouTube analytics picks it up the, in, in head office. They are looking at all the live streams that are going on right now on their, on their system throughout YouTube globally. And every thumbs up that gets hit is another little indicator to YouTube. Hey, 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 there's this, there's this channel that's popping here. Um, let's send more people to, 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 with investment interests. Let's send more people to this guy. Let's recommend this guy's channel and tell them to join him live right now. They might be interested in what we have to talk about. What are we talking about? We're talking about your favorite stocks on this channel. If you're following these uh, former SPACs that we're following here, you want more people to follow your, form, your, SPAC, your stocks. It's as simple as that. The more people that follow what we're talking about, the more people that are probably going to become become shareholders in these entities, which makes these stocks go up because we're buying up the free float of these companies. That's as simple as I can put it. Uh, the more of us that watch this show, the more of you that are picking up uh, Matterport, ME, Spire, ATIP, Rocket Lab, SoFi, GameStop, uh, SmartRen, Sextera, and others, and uh, getting into the options game. And that means this family gets larger, more powerful more of a force and that's what i want this channel to become i want this channel to become a place that that uh, presidents or uh, investor relations people pay attention to because they realize oh my god if this guy this homeless canadian who travels wherever he travels with his wife uh, mentions us oh my god we could have unbelievable interest in our stock and increase in our following um, this is why we need a larger following to have that kind of power we get that kind of power public companies contact me and say hey we got news we thought you should know uh, we have a press release we just released i don't know if you're aware of it but here's what's going on uh, what i would love to do and again we need more viewers to make this happen but i would love to invite uh public company officials onto this channel for chats, live chats, one-on-ones where I'm on this half of the screen, they're on that half of the screen, and I can answer them questions that you have about the public company. The uh, larger this channel gets, the more power we have, the easier it gets to invite people in. A small channel like I have right now, it doesn't work. They look at us and go, yeah, it's just a homeless guy We're talking to a couple hundred people. They're nothing. They're all dweebs. They don't know what they're doing. They're noobs. Uh, they, they, have no, they have no appreciation for the markets. They're all just you know, amateur traders. Little do they know 
uh, just how prolific you folks are becoming and how knowledgeable you're getting with regard to how this market works. And um, they should not be ignoring you. They should be courting you aggressively and saying, hey, uh, Bruce, um, can we appear on your channel? And uh, we have a vice president of marketing here. Uh, we've got our senior uh, you know, operations analyst. We have a VP of whatever. We have our CEO. Uh, uh, we're doing a tour. Uh, we're going to go on CNBC. We're going to talk to some vloggers. Uh, why don't we talk to you? Uh, because we noticed that your viewers um, ask questions all the time about our company. And, um, you know, maybe there's a, a, a symmetry here. We should get together. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm after. Um, we're trying to build the following of this channel to the point where we become a force on the markets. We're at 231 thumbs ups now. Like I said, every one of these uh every one of these thumbs ups adds another quill to our arsenal and uh it just shows youtube the engagement between creator and viewer is massive here because i try to read a lot of your comments uh where a lot of other youtubers is it just ignore this section they don't even acknowledge a comment from you um I do the best I can to try to stay on top of this. Uh, and uh, that's uh, a good thing for YouTube. Uh, it makes this a much more engaging site for YouTube to promote to the planet. Uh, we are unknown. Uh, you have to know this. Uh, we are really are. Uh, you 475 that are here, you're the core of this channel. Yeah, of course. There's always, everyone has a core following. But there are 4.75 million more that should be here and uh, could be here. And, uh, you know. We start one viewer at a time and we grow it out. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Uncle Bruce, uh, the Credit Savage, what are your thoughts on SoFi? Uh, $16 covered calls, 17, 19s. My shares are, are just sitting there collecting dust. Should I wait until the bank charter next year, next millennia, Millennium Falcon? Uh, yeah, your guess is as good as mine as to when this happens. Um, you know, we all know they're going to get the bank charter. Uh, we, we all know that. They've applied for it you know, eons ago. Um, they've made certain moves already that um, you have to make if you're going to get the bank charter. <laughs> Excuse me. They're sitting on a mountain of money. I mean, this company's sitting on a mountain of cash. I mean billions of cash, billions of dollars. Uh, they have uh, the ability. I would say SoFi could pick up $10 billion like that. They needed to raise $10 billion to, to do whatever they want to do, give out loans. They could get it like that. $20 billion like that. Um, this, this is a juggernaut. This is a monster of a company that is uh, in disguise right now as a $14.90 stock. That's just you know one of millions uh, or thousands out there. You know they're like fifteen bucks a share. So what? Nothing exciting. This baby right here has the ability to hit triple digits uh, within the year. Um, definitely can reach the two hundred mark next year. Um, and um, a lot of us, you know, we acknowledge that yeah that could happen, but we don't believe it. <laughs> and uh, millions of investors out there globally have no idea that SoFi is the powerhouse that it really is. They have no idea. If, if um, one-tenth of the market players out there right now, one-tenth of all the people that buy and sell stock all the time, what, I'm t no, not one-tenth, one-tenth of one percent of all the people that play the stock market right now knew what you know about what SoFi does and what SoFi is going to be doing They'd be buying this stuff right now up to 35 a share going, this thing's going to go. Because they would look at $35 as a bargain because they're looking at this as a $200 stock. But it isn't getting that kind of exposure yet. It's trading great, beautifully. Uh, you know, $25 million a day. Is, yeah, it's great. But it's among the same people. There's a lot of day traders flipping it, flipping it. But a lot of liquidity here. That's a good sign. Very good sign. It's a sign for us that there can be an explosion of price movement, but that hasn't happened yet. The desperate buyers, the, the desperados who are going, oh my God, I never knew SoFi was this prolific uh, machine. When they figure it out, they're going to be the guys paying the top, top dollar. And you're going to be asking me, bros, I used to ask you about when the charter was going to happen. I used to ask you, when is this thing going to go? Now I'm going to ask you, what do I do with my call options? that I bought that are now at $20 a piece. What, what am I gonna do now? Or what contract should I write 
Should I write 45s or 50s? How far out should I go? Do I dare go out three months and write $60 calls? I could get called away. That's the future of SoFi. Hard to imagine, isn't it, when it's sitting at 1487? But then again, you saw what happened to Matterport when it went to $37 unexpectedly with nothing. It just went there. This baby right here is going to hit 88 miles an hour. When it hits 88 miles an hour, you're going to see some serious you-know-what. And uh, what can I tell you? It's 1487 down 18 cents this morning. It's traded 294,000 shares. And millions of investors haven't got a clue because they don't have an Uncle Bruce to go and talk to and watch. They, they don't have someone like me. If there were 25 other Uncle Bruce's out there, around the world and all these different countries talking about SoFi like I talk about SoFi, this would be a $50 stock right now. It would be. Uh, so either Uncle Bruce's have to be created <laughs> or this channel has to grow to 25 times its size. <laughs> Hence, give me thumbs up. Uh, or uh, the market um, awareness is just going to keep growing. And I think it's option number three, hopefully some of number two. but. I think number three will be the answer. The charter will make a huge difference. Yes, it legitimizes the future forever. But say goodbye to 14 and 15 and $17 a share forever as well. Just say, say goodbye to this neighborhood. We're gone, we're gone, 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 totally different. But hey, you want me to give you an exact minute that this is gonna happen? Can't help you, just can't help you. All right, uh, anyway, 1487 is where we're at right at the moment on uh, SoFi. Now, what options should you buy? Look, if you're uh, you're not going to write covered calls right now, I wouldn't dare write a covered call against this thing. No way. There's $15 of upside waiting to explode at any moment. And yeah, you could do a rollover. You know, you, you could write a $17, $17.50 call and then do a rollover when it's $27.50, but now you're going to have to pay 12 bucks to buy your call back. And then you have to write the next one for 12 or more uh, that you're you're pushing your luck, mister. Uh, so you're better off just buying the stock right now. Those of you who are not into this stock, I have said it before and I will say it again. You get your butts into $10 and $12.50 and $15 call options good till late this summer, like July, September, August, something like that. Get into SoFi calls way up there in the money. Uh, the highest price you pay is $15 a contract. Because the first $5 that this stock moves, I want you guys coming to me going, oh God, Bruce, I'm up 250% of my money. What do I do? That's what I want. I want to hear those comments from you when we just reach 20. When we reach 25, two days later, I want you to go, oh God, everything you told me the other day, now what do I do? That's the problem I want you to have. You're making so much money, you're now fearing the tax man because you're rich. Uh, Fumbler, you know what? I'm number 217 there, buddy. Uh, thank you, Fumbler, for joining in on this channel today. Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce, careful what you wish for. We're getting ready, baby. We're getting ready. Uh, we're going to have a party. Let's see what happens here. Uh, are we open? Yes, we are. Um, I'm sure. Uh, cool Hand Lee, by the way, new member. Uh, thank you, buddy, for becoming the uh, latest, greatest add-on member of this group of crazies. Um, uh, nice to see you here as an upgraded gold member uh, player. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, Larry, I know Larry, you hit the bells. I know you did it. Uh, DQ was warning us. There it is. Thanks, Larry, for all this. I appreciate this very much. Thanks, buddy, for telling us we are up and running for uh, the markets right now. Let's see what happens, kids. Are we going to make money or what? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. Um, uh, what's going on? What's going on? I'm not sure what's happening here. Some people are talking about cheddar doing something. What's going on, Cherry? I don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, I don't know what cheddar's doing. Cheddar, cheddar, what's going on? I'm missing the whole thing. Um, and uh, let's see. I don't, need, I don't understand what's going on with cheddar. I don't understand. Hey, cheddar, you're, you're, we love you. You know we love you. We always will, always have. Whether you're here or not, we love you anyway. So we love you. Um, let's make money. Uh, can't we just can't we just make money? I'm sure we can. Um, let's see what we got going on. Little down dip to start, as expected. Uh, let's just see how down how down dippy we get. Um, we're now at um, 
on the Dow, we're down 29 points. We're up, uh, sorry, we're up 29 on the Dow. We're down 11 or 14, down 14 on S&P. We're down 131 on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the loser like yesterday. High yield, uh, sorry, high growth, high PE multiple stocks are out of favor for this second in time. This isn't going to last long. We're down 149 on NASDAQ. Uh, S&P down 13, Dow up 22. Um, I just don't see this lasting very long, but hey, it's just me. Uh, let's see. Uh, he's just taking a break from this channel uh, to focus on real life. That's all good, man. It ain't no problem here. Um, going into stealth mode, it's all good. It's all good. Um, and let's see what else is going on. Uh, Cheddar broke up with us all. Uh, you know what? It's fine. It's, it's fine. Cheddar, you do what you need to do. You you put it together. Um, and um, and we'll just keep, we'll just, we'll be here. We'll always be here. And uh, we you know where you're loved. You're loved here. All righty, guys. Uh, thank you. Um, let's see. I'm back to meeting mode, but I didn't miss the bells this time. Well, thanks, Larry, <laughs> for all your help. Appreciate it. Uh, fabulous, man. I love it. Um, let's see. We're down 29 cents on Rocket Lab. We're down 25 cents on uh, SoFi at 14.80. GameStop is 145.38, down 360. We're going to watch the first 20, 30, 40 minutes and see what GameStop wants to give us. Matterport, we're down 67 cents. Same thing right there. ME down 18. Spire down 14. ATIP down three cents. Smart rent down 12 cents. Six stairs down only seven. AMC down 79. Robinhood down 33. Vanek down 369. Home Depot down four. You notice the pattern? We're all red. IBM up 68 cents, one of the few. Um, Microsoft down seven bucks. Apple down $1.33. Tesla down 940. Uh, Royal Caribbean up 133. Goldman up 419 to 411. This is what I'm watching and looking for. I want to know what Goldman has in store for us along with GameStop. Uh, Goldman hit a high of 412.57 so far. Um, 415s might be the contract to write for Friday. It might be 415s, might be 420s for next Friday. Nice, juicy, fat premiums might be the way to go on Goldman. We'll just watch and learn. If you've written contracts already, sit tight. Don't twitch. Don't do anything. Cisco, 6122, down three pennies. Um, we got Amazon down $34, Facebook down $250, and Google down 11 bucks. That is the story at the moment, uh, what I see going on. Moderna is actually, actually up 430 today to 237, and I'm not surprised to see Moderna bounce. I think there's a 50 to $100 bounce in Moderna, but you got to be uh, pretty thick in the midsection to take that kind of action, but that's what's happening there. Not calling it, but I just kind of got a gut vibe on it. Let's see how we do. Uh, Rocket Lab improving already, down only 15 cents. Uh, we um, went down as low as 11.30. We're now at 11.51, up uh, up to that level. SoFi had a low this morning of uh, 14.72. We're now at 14.90. We're only up 15 cents, 1.3 million. GameStop got down to 144.83. We're at 145.40. Matterport was as low as 1738. We're now 1785. If this thing breaks through 18 to 18 and a half, starts to top out a dollar from here, $20 calls for Jan 21 is what you want to start writing. Uh, let's take a look here. ME, we are down 11 cents. We were as low as 658. We're now 668. We've come back a dime on ME. Spire now at $3.40, had a hit 338 for the low. ATIP now up three cents on the morning. We were as low as 331. We're now 338. ATIP is green, the first one to turn. Smart rent 906 down a dime. Low of the day 904. Sextera low of the day 1201. We're at 1202. That is it so far this morning. It is not a bloodbath at all. It's just a few uh, uh, little dips. And now let's see what happens. Uh, the Dow is down 13. I'm expecting the Dow to give up some ground here. It's record highs. Uh, S&P down 9. NASDAQ down 105. That is not a massive sell-off by any means. It's just a pullback. And I'm kind of figuring, you know, kind of looking for this. Um, Goldman right now, 411.04 after topping out at 412.57 today. Alrighty, let's see what else is going on here. I didn't think I'd see Matterport at this level again, says damn it, Jim. Uh, Matterport, 1775 right now. Rocket Lab down 19 at 1146. SoFi down 14 cents. 
We've got ME down only a nickel, Spire down 11. We're up a penny on ATIP. We're down a dime on Smart Rent. We're down 15 pennies on Sextera. Um, we're only down 27 cents on Robinhood, down 85 cents on AMC. AMC's got to give us $26 if you want to write 27 calls. AMC gives us $25.50, you write $26 calls for Friday. Otherwise, you write 27s for perhaps next Friday and take, uh, take a position there. Uh, IBM up 75 cents to 138.77 to see if we'll see if it gets to 39 and perhaps 140. The Dow is positive again, plus 23 points right now. S&P down uh, six, Nasdaq down 86. Alrighty, um, Ford is pulling back from uh, from a two decade high after sales fall 17 percent from a year ago. Uh, Ford's reality is <laughs> the sales aren't there. Why are this? Why are the shares so high? I can tell you why Ford shares are so high. People think Ford's going to become Tesla. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> Ford has issues. Ford has all kinds of issues, and I don't recommend it. I don't recommend Ford stock. I I, I think Ford stock is way overpriced. <clears throat> they're not going to have any profits of, of significance. They've got supply chain issues, and they have to put in billions and billions of dollars into their vehicles to electrify them, and they're going to have all kinds of glitches. So why why wouldn't why wouldn't Ford have glitches if Tesla had glitches? Uh, Tesla only makes electric cars. Has only ever made electric cars. Ford is going from gas engines to electric uh, gas cars to electric uh, cars or trucks, SUVs. They're going to have billions of dollars in logistical issues. GM, tens of billions of problems uh, electrifying over. Toyota, one of the best run car companies on the planet, hasn't got electric cars all over their parking lot yet. And they have unlimited resources and unlimited engineering, and they can't do it. Uh, if Toyota isn't the leader in electric, how can Ford and GM even think to be the leaders? There's no way they're going to be leaders in that area. Tesla is by far the leader in, in, in uh, having solved all kinds of logistical issues. The reliability of their vehicles has been exceptional considering they've started with no track record whatsoever. Uh, these other guys are, are going to you know, gonna run through this. I, I, I tell you, you think you're going to buy Ford because Ford's going to become a Tesla stock? You're dreaming. You are out of touch of reality it's not going to happen the exciting thing and what gets people jazzed up is oh i can buy ford in the 20s and if it goes to 500 a share i'm going to make 20 times my money it's not going to happen uh, there's no way these guys have got legacy issues debts all over the place factories that are going to have to get shut down and rejiggered um we're talking Billions in debt that have to be acquired to make everything happen. Uh, there's no way that stock's going anywhere. Uh, that's just, that's my opinion. It's a, you, you may have your own. Got my ticket punch for Matterport, Feb 20s at $1.40. There you go. Come and get me. That's the attitude right now. Write that contract. Tell them, here's my stink offer. Come and get me. Rob, damn it, uh, Jim. That's what I said about SoFi. But lo and behold, it's back to SPAC levels. $14.99 right now on SoFi, down six cents. Rocket Lab down 13 cents. Um, Matterport, <coughs> 1770, down 44. ME down 4 cents. Spire is only down 13. ATIP is up 2. Smart Rent down 11. And Sextera is down a nickel. We are not getting a bloodletting here. Absolutely not. All right. Uh, this is not blood on the streets, Arico. Uh, you're completely misreading it. Uh, these are bargains that aren't going to last long today. Bobby, I'm with you. Just means buying opportunity. Rob's got it. He knows. Damn it, Jim. Rob, I agree. The only way I could see SoFi doing this is because I bought a ton of it. I'm still above my average, but it's getting close. Are there warrants due on Matterport in uh, January? I don't remember. I thought Matterport had done their warrant thing. I thought they'd been uh, blown out. Uh, if anyone knows the answer, uh, please provide it, but we'll see. Rob, Rob is saying, damn it, the same, he, damn, same here. Maybe I'll actually be able to average down a bit on SoFi at this rate, 1450 average price. Intel, wow, Joe says, Intel, look at Intel. What do we got going on Intel? It is sitting at 164 gain at 54.78 today, uh, up nicely, uh, open at uh, uh, 53.57 hit 55.19. It's now 54.78 up a dollar 64 on Intel. Micron is up a dollar 16 as well, and that's got to mean good news on the um, 
um, Vanek Vectors hasn't shown yet. Vanek Vectors only down, still down 279 at 311. There's some upside possibly there. Home Depot down 541. IBM 138.94, 138.97 up 95 cents. The Dow up three and a half points. We've got uh, S and P up six, down six, and we got Nasdaq down 86. We're going lower, I think. Apple down 90. Microsoft down 720. Tesla up four bucks. Um, uh, Goldman up two dollars nineteen cents, back to four oh nine. You have a limited time offer on this Goldman Sachs to make your move. Write your contracts up here. We may have a pullback back to four hundred. Cisco up twenty seven cents on a little snapback rally right now. We'll see how long that lasts. Um, did you cover smart rent acquisition of IQQE? Are we talking? Are you talking about the? Uh, the deal, uh, uh, no, smart, sorry, smart rent acquisition, IQQ, that's uh, something different. Sorry, I'm mixing up my symbols here. Uh, I have not heard this announcement, uh, and I got nothing um, uh, 17 hours ago. Smart rent acquires IQUE, East Coast based smart home service provider. 17 hours ago, uh, they're going to contribute $2 million in annual recurring revenue. This acquisition. It did not cover this. I'm showing the report here. Uh, they announced that they acquired, uh, the company announced that they acquired yesterday this IQUE, an open architecture smart apartment company with over 2,200 installed and committed units throughout the East Coast. The acquisition provides smart rent incremental exposure in a new build in multifamily market and expands smart rent's presence in the Southeast by adding 19 new customers who own or control approximately 100,000 units. Uh, they built an impressive smart apartment and community Wi-Fi offering for its clients. We share a similar value proposition that enables operators to leverage smart devices to improve the resident experience while managing properties more efficiently and effectively, says Lucas Haldman, CEO of SmartRent. The, uh, the IQUE team brings expertise in deploying their platform in the new construction market, which is an important component of our growth plan. Um, they've been a success on penetrating property owners and managers with less than 20,000 units under management, helping diversify our customer base while expanding smart rents presidents in this property rich segment of the multifamily market. The uh, acquisition is expected to add about $2 million in annual recurring revenue or ARR to smart rents revenue stream and will immediately diversify and expand smart rents customer base by adding over 16,600 completed units and an additional 6,300 committed units to its sales pipeline. Um, the founders, co-founders of this company will join Smart Rent to ensure a smooth integration and to help further Smart Rent growth, in growth initiatives. This is a friendly takeover. It's a friendly merger. They're adding people to the team. It's a smart roof. Smart move by Smart Rent. I like it. Um, obviously, it didn't move the market much yesterday, did it? Uh, but you know what? Uh, these are the kind of moves to expect from Smart Rent continually uh there'll be more of this and it will have its effect there will be analysts sooner or later who will go you know this smart brand at 904 this thing is a real cheap way to get into multi hundreds of thousands of units of management with this wi-fi system they've created uh the the market just needs to be aware of these guys that's all that that slipped under the radar thanks uh, uh bleacher for for uh, sorry Arico. thank you for this appreciate it very much i really appreciate your bleacher creature uncle bruce game stop down three bucks wait till 10 10 15 before it goes writing more calls yeah i want to wait this first half hour i want to see what uh gamestop has in store here i want to really know just what the opening is going to do here we're 145.53 right now we're down 338 on the stock we've traded 135,900. I want to know, is there a couple hundred thousand coming in for sale to start the day that gets picked off and then it dries up and we pop up into this 150 range? Show me what you got in the first half hour to an hour and then we'll figure out what to do with contracts. We will be paid to hold this stock. That is the deal. SoFi is green at 1506 right now. Um, the high of the day, 1518 already. Now we're at 1509 again. 2.53 million ran out of stock. Uh, stock came in for six morning. It's gone. There's nothing more coming in. Why? There's no tax loss selling anymore for 2021. All right, let's see. Um, what else is going on? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Hector says the definition of frustration is when the internet ads have the bandwidth to play, 
but stock marks with Bruce will not load. Uh, premium internet, my ass. There you go. <laughs> uh, Rob, 100,000 GameStop volume in 10 minutes. It's a snooze fest. I hear you that. Um, uh, Midnight Adventure. Ford cannot produce vehicles without chips. They have zero chips. Cars have been waiting for over six months for chips. My uncle owns a Ford dealership, and he is very worried. There you go. Uh, Ford stock, uh-uh, don't touch that. KY, let's go, Elon, uh, go for launch. Ford has the infrastructure, but not the research and development of Tesla. Beach Boy Rob, wake me up when it moves. Ratish, you're right, Uncle Bruce, but most middle-class people can't buy a $35,000 Tesla. You know what, Ratish, most people can buy a $35,000 Tesla. Average used car prices are twenty-nine thousand dollars used car prices and with used cars you don't get factory financing you have to go to your banker new cars come with financing and middle class can afford thirty five thousand dollar cars they can afford fifty thousand dollar cars and why is that because to borrow money for a middle class american is three to four percent interest in most cases it actually is not an issue you can lease a Tesla with virtually nothing down and payments of four or five hundred a month for six, seven years. Cheap in the auto business. This is not expensive over here. No, Tesla is beautifully positioned to take advantage of top uh, sale projections through the middle class. It's the lower middle class that can't afford it, but Tesla doesn't care about the lower middle class. They don't need the lower middle class to make a go of it. Ford does. Ford needs all classes of Americans to be able to buy their product, but Ford is not going to be able to deliver a Model 3 sedan because they don't make cars anymore. Ford is only going to deliver SUV type vehicles and trucks. And Ford trying to produce an SUV, Ford Explorer, Bronco, whatever you want to call it, electric, whatever. You're going to have to compete with the Model Y on Tesla or the Model X. And those vehicles will kick Ford's butt because Tesla can cut prices for the next five years on these cars as they up their volumes. Because Tesla will get to 2 million production and 3 million production in the next five years. And they will undercut Ford, GM, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Volkswagen, Mercedes, BMW. They'll undercut them and they have better quality and they have a track record of delivering the goods, and they don't have a dealership network that where it's an excruciating exercise to try to buy a car. It's excruciating walking into a dealership. And you want to talk to about millennials and Gen Y and Gen X and whatever the other gens are, you want to talk to 25 and 35-year-olds and 40-year-olds to walk into a dealership to buy an electric car? They're not going to do it. They're, 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 no, no, they're going to go click, click, click on Tesla, and they're going to buy Teslas. They're going to buy it where it's the easiest way to get it. Jen and I went to Costco yesterday. We were sitting at a red light, and right beside us was the Ford Mustang electric car. It's a box. It's a golf cart that has been put on steroids. It's not a, it's not a Mustang. It's a hatchback SUV that has been electrified, and they call it a Mustang. It's a piece of crap. I, I, it has no styling, has no pedigree, has no emotion. It's a square electric box. And I think for Ford, it's a tax write-off. They produced it to get all kinds of federal grants and discounts and interest-free loans and all kinds of freebies from the feds. That's all that car is, in my opinion. Um, I'm sitting in a Model 3 and uh, we've got a stylish car. You said sort of got a Model Y over there. They look great. Uh, people are proud to be driving their Model 3s and Model Ys and their Model Ss and Model Xs. The, these Ford Mustangs, oh, God, they look pathetic. They look nothing like a Mustang at all. I mean, I saw a Mustang, gasoline-powered Mustang, go through the intersection while I'm sitting beside this one at the red light. And then, well, there's a Mustang. That's a Mustang. This has nothing to do with Mustang whatsoever. Anyway, that's my thinking. Uh, Midnight says, he and my partner are buying back cars they sold two years ago. Try to stock the dealership with cars. Unbelievable. Uh, Thomas Edison and Ford, Henry Ford made an electric car. The Ford's wife drove. Yeah. Uh, it has nothing to do with electric car market, LOL, but cool. 
Uh, Joe N, 180-day lockup expiry for January 21st for Matterport. Uh, I don't know if that's a bad thing for Matterport at all. I I don't know. There's another round of warrants on Matterport in February, from what I understand. We'll follow it. Uh, Rob, I may sell some Spire at a loss to buy more SoFi and Matterport. YBM keeps climbing. It does. Uh, YBM has had a good run lately. We're at 139.25, up 123. Microsoft down 6. Apple down 52. Tesla down is up 4. Uh, Goldman up 7 cents now at 407. We're backing off. Cisco only up 6 cents, backing off. Uh, Amazon down $23. Facebook down 2. Google down $24. That's a sign of what's happening on the big markets at the moment. Um, Rocket Lab up uh, down 23 cents. SoFi up three. Uh, GameStop is down $3, 145.78. Volume 165,000. Matterport down 62 to 17.60. ME down seven. Spire down 24. Unbelievable at 328, ridiculous. We're up four cents on Spire, 339. It's, uh, sorry, ATIP at 339 is higher than Spire, which is 329. So we got Spire at 329, ATIP at 339, and that's because Spire's off 22 cents this morning. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'll tell you right here, uh, they're announcing, uh, Spire announcing participation in the upcoming investor event. They're doing all the right things. They're going to investor conferences. They're exposing their company's potential to the world. And for whatever reason, the stock is down. I just don't get it. Uh, I'm not giving up on it, but it is wild and wacky. Smart rent down only nine cents. Sextera down a penny. 12, 16. We're about to go green on Sextera. We might be green on Sextera. Smart rent. Uh, we might be, we should be green on ME the way this thing is going down only six cents. We could be positive on about five of our SPACs, SP, former SPACs here rather quickly. We'll watch for that. The Dow is up nine, SP down four, NASDAQ down 60. Seven. All right. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. SoFi Green, baby. That's right. We're green. We were green. We're still green. Uh, in for another 100 Spire. Why not? Uh, scored a cheap leap on SoFi. Good job. Uh, my 1550 SoFis are in the money, but for how long? Uh, let's see here. Um, let's go. I want more premium on GameStop first. That's it. That's it. Uh, let's see. Yesterday's dip picked up 10 SoFi July 22s, 10 long calls, um, rock and roll SoFi 1506. Um, Smart Rent also appointed new legal chief legal officer. Uh, not sure if that's anything to get excited about. Um, I had no idea about the used cars. Yes, sir. They're, they're sky high expensive. Ford quit making cars because there are not many buying them. The guest miners was hardly better than most of its crossovers. And the bottom line is Americans want V8 cars. They want trucks. V8. Americans want big, fat cars. Let's face it. The buyers with the money in America are fat, overweight people like me. Uh, the, we're 40 and older. We're overweight. We're lazy. Uh, we are, uh, we're not, uh, uh, we're, 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 we got the money. We have cash. And we want the bells and whistles, and we want V6, V8 power, fat cars. This is the way we are. We talk the talk on the environment, but we don't walk the walk. Now, me, I personally, <clears throat> I want a Tesla. I've always wanted a Tesla. I want a Tesla since 2013. Uh, I am very much a believer in the electric cars <clears throat> taking over the world. I, I believe it's possible. There's only one way to guarantee it. <clears throat> There's only one way for Canadians and particularly Americans to get rid of gas powered cars. There's only one way to do it. How? You raise the uh, taxes on driving them. You make it impossibly expensive to drive gasoline powered cars. How do you do that? You put a $3 a gallon surtax, federal surtax on gasoline. You turn around and offer those, those tax dollars into electric charging stations and uh, tax write-offs for Americans who buy electric cars up to a certain dollar value. What you don't do is you give Tesla free license to raise their prices by 10,000 a car because you're gonna get a $10,000 rebate. No, you limit it to the first $20,000 of an electric car. After that, you're on your own. So you make the first five ten thousand dollars $10,000 affordable by giving you a $2,000 a year per year for five years rebate on your car, not in one shot. 
And that way, the car companies have to compete at price to get you in to buy their vehicle. That keeps the cost of electric down, not let it go sky high by having taxpayer-funded freebies being handed out. It's just my take on it. It's the only way you're going to do it. You have to make it so expensive to drive an electric uh, to buy to drive a gasoline car, a diesel car that you price people out of them. Of course, you're going to get voted out of office. The first the first version of elect a politician that does it, but the second politician has to keep it in place, and then that way that game is over. But. It's not going to happen here. It's not the way it is. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Uncle Bruce, but right now used cars are selling for up to 50% more than they were a year or two ago. Just saying. It's unreal, Credit Savage. It really is. Uh, in New York, people are paying up to 50 grand over MSRP to buy new end vehicles. People have money to spend. I know. Um, Alberta, how's it going? Michael, agree. Uh, Mach E is gross. Uh, Bruce knows I'm all about the iconic five. Nicholas, to be fair, Ford, there is no great electric truck on the market. Ford Lightning is going to sell well. That's right. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, Tesla, I really wish they came out with an, an electric truck that was as stylish as the Model S, the Model 3, um, not this cube thing, aluminum type body truck. This has got such little appeal to the traditional truck market. It's going to appeal to the 20 to 30 somethings. But then again, that's maybe Tesla's plan. They're not interested in us uh, in the 60 year olds to get into the truck market or 50 year olds. No, they don't want us. They're giving us off to GMC, Chrysler, like Ram trucks, Ford trucks. They're going after the next wave. Maybe that's what it is. I, again, we'll see when the trucks are on the road. Uncle Bruce, there are all administrative fat in all these companies. You're right. The same applies to other industries that are over, overlooked. The biggest culprits, in my opinion, legal and healthcare. Uh, Ford killed my killed me family too. Um, Adventures for good morning, um, uh, Alberto. Hanging in there. Wish you the best. The Maki is embarrassing. Agreed. Bruce, become a car salesman. I've already done that. I've already been a car salesman. I've been a car leasing expert. Been there, done that. I've done so much. Bruce, tell it like it is. Nazareth. Anyone else notice that AMC, GameStop, SoFi all move in the same direction the last few days? What's the common theme? Who's short of these stocks? Damn it, Jim. Just asking Uncle B, why do you rent a Tesla instead of just buying one? Because I'm a nomad. I am not here very long. I'm in the U.S. now for like five months. We're likely going to travel to Europe in the spring and summer. We might be in Calgary a little bit. We're The next two years, Jennifer and I are all over the place. We might be in Australia next year. We might be in Asia for a while. We're, we're nomads, homeless, carless, asset-less. We're just liquid and we're traveling only. We're 66. We think we've got until 68, 69 to re in relative health. Uh, with a few issues here and there, and then we're going to tie ourselves down, and then I'll get myself a Tesla wherever we end up hanging our hat, likely Calgary, Alberta. That's why I don't buy one now. So I'm just renting one. What the hey? Um, using my profits here to pay for my quad cyber truck, ne much needed in Minnesota, right on Ratish. Um, uh, Kareem, New York City, the only place I know where people are as crazy as they are here. Uh, credit, this is why we must buy Lucid. Those are some sexy ass cars. EcoBoost says KY. Uh, Velvas, um, anybody else get a holiday visit from Om Omcron Oculus? Uh, wife started feeling blah Monday, tested positive yesterday. So far, nothing too bad. Fingers crossed it stays the same. I feel fine. Joe, Uncle Bruce agreed, not suggesting lockup expiry for Matterport affects them as others. Just happy to have it come and go. I'm with you there. Damn it, Jim Ratish. I was seriously thinking of buying one of them, but that was told. Huge production delay. Um, uh, let's see. Malo, Swiss butter, let alone secret Uncle Bruce was a car salesman. He's got some real funny stories about Lada's. In the snow, yes, I was, I was in the leasing business, and I have had, I had stories. Oh, story! I wasn't in the business for long, but I got stories. Uh, Splair, I agree that the Ford Mach, something new, but really has nothing to do with a Mustang. When I look at the Google pictures, oh, it's awful. Uh, Mirko, European point of view, electric car trucks or SUVs make next to no sense at all. They are not efficient. I gotta go. It's a piece of crap. If it's not Scottish, it's crap. A DM, the Mustang Mach E is actually a really great vehicle for a crossover. And naming it Mustang was a marketing department. I'm sure it's definitely gotten good reviews from Car and Review. I have no idea, DM, but it doesn't look like a Mustang. I'm not able to sell open. I'm not able to sell to open a $20 covered call on Matterport. I get this rejection order rejected. The order is not an opening transaction. It will decrease or close an, ex an existing options position. 
Uh, BW, I'm not sure what your deal is there. Uh, do you have any open orders? DQ wants to know. Do you have any open orders now? That might be holding you up right now. Uh, let's see. Um, and I don't own any other covered calls uh, at the moment. Uh, credit, gosh, no way. Uh, knock on wood. The family and I traveled on Sunday and we're at the airport and a sardine car for a while. Our kid took a COVID test for school and she's negative. Thank goodness. Roland, thinking between Gold Bagel member and YouTube Premium, can't afford the two. I've been spacked uh, for uh, a. I've been spacked for six uh, months. A B R box are turning green. Damage him. True. I have a large V8 truck. No interest in these smaller engine ones. However, I would buy the Cyber Truck. There you go. Rocket Lab down 26 cents. SoFi down three cents. GameStop 364 lower. Matterport down 61. ME down 12. Spire down 18. ATIP up three. Smart Rent down seven. Six era up six. We got two in the green. The rest are getting close, but not yet. Um, Goldman 408 62 high of 412.66 today. That was the high. We're at 408. So Goldman is now paying you to have written those contracts and just let them depreciate now with time. We'll see if they want to back off today. We'll see if the Dow wants to back off today. We're only up a half a point on the Dow. We're down four on S&P. We're down 62 on NASDAQ. Um, oil up $1.11 right now. All righty, uh, let's see what's going on. Vilbus, I tested positive in on New Year, on New Year's Eve. Day three was the worst. I'm at day five now, and I'm 80% better. This is a common story. My daughter caught COVID uh, over the holidays, uh, four days. Uh, first two days, really awful. Third day came back. Fourth day, really came back. Now she's 95% better. I prefer German car, says Michael. Um, Adventure Duncan, I'm shrugging. Uh, come back to the show to find people talking about my beautiful baby Ford. Love to see it. Uh, Vilbus, that's good to hear. I'd love it if we have a similar experience. Damn it, I am, however, far from fat and exercise. I'm kind of a unicorn. It's all good, my friend. In, if people in California all turn to on their air conditioning, they would shut the electric grid down. How do we expect to replace all cars with electric and have an infrastructure to handle it? I understand. I agree. I agree. But it will not happen overnight. It can't and it won't. Electric cars will get 2 to 3% of the market every year, every year, every year. A decade from now, half the cars and the trucks will likely be electric. Um, municipalities will be allowed to, uh, will be able to electrify all kinds of fleets that they have. Buses, trucks, SUVs, company vehicles or, 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 or county vehicles, state vehicles. It's all going that direction bit by bit, by bit. Count on it. It's going to happen. BWDQ, nope, not with any at all, uh, with any call on those shares. Sold, covered a month ago, but bought back and closed it. Very odd. May have to call them. I think you should call them up. Uh, DM, Bruce's take on cars makes me understand how the anti-vaxxers feel during his other rants. <laughs> Can I say? Uh, it's so obvious. Here in California, we are so ahead here. And when I say we, because I'm a Californian right now, this area is so ahead of the rest of the country when it comes to electrical vehicles. It is stunning to see how many vehicles just on the roads around here are electric. And in LA on the freeways, it's incredible. It's 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 like one in seven, one in eight. It in some areas it's one in four. Four. It's it's un unbelievable. Charging stations are are jam packed with uh, at times with Teslas. But I mean, I plug the Tesla I have here into the garage wall at 110 volts, and the car's always charged up. I don't drive it that much, so I don't need a gas car ever again. If I were to live here permanently, why would I need a gas car? Everyone around here drives electric golf carts. Driving electric car is just a natural progression. And so people are dumping the Bentleys, they're dumping the Benzes, they're dumping the BMWs. They're getting the performance, but they're also getting the style and they're getting the convenience of an electric car and the low cost to drive it and maintain it. To maintain a BMW, a Volvo, a Benz, you want to maintain a Bentley around here? You're talking thousands a year in maintenance costs, thousands and thousands. Teslas? couple of hundred bucks a year. I mean, it's tires. That's it. A wind, window washing fluid um, and electricity, which is less than gas, 
it's it's an it's a bargoon to drive a Tesla around here. Dr. Walter Bruce, you don't need to rig the market in favor of EVs. Just remove all subsidies from fossil fuel extraction, importing, and EVs will become cheaper by default. I, I totally agree. I totally agree with that as well. Hector Stinkbid worked on GameStop January 07 option buyback. Nice job. Well done. Way to go. Auntie Jen, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm ranting and I'm raving and I'm all oh, steamed up. I'm getting yeah. everybody all riled up. I'm getting people upset. I can hear you talking. George is getting upset. <laughs> Actually, we're having fun. I think we're having a good time. Uh, we have 513 folks here and they were all wondering how you're doing. You're alive and you're well. I am alive. Welcome, well, welcome back. It's just, nice to see you. Already got my tea and... Things are happening. It's all good. It's all good. Jen's got her tea. That's right. Things are okay. Uh, Jen don't get no tea. <laughs> Jane ain't, Jen ain't happy. And if Jen ain't happy, I'm in big trouble. Nobody's uh, happy. <laughs> I'm, I get bruised. I get bruised. Thank God I'm a karate man. Thank I bruise on the God. inside. <laughs> like Eddie Murphy said in uh, trading, trading places. places. I'm a karate man. I bruise on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my, 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 my. Fun times. Fun, fun times. Fun so what's times. happening today? Well, we, we, we started a little bit of a negative uh, run, and now we're, you know, kind of hanging around here. Um, the Dow is, is up 25 points, like it was yesterday. And now S&P is down 4.5, and, and NASDAQ's down 77. Same pattern as yesterday. Anything coming out today or this week? There's uh, minutes, uh, Fed minutes coming out uh, later today, okay. uh, talking about what the Fed talked about in their last meeting about tapering, uh, cutting back, tapering, erasing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rates of the new year. A lot of people wondering if this is going to be faster than people thought or what. That's what's coming up. Um, and there's this talk out there that... Um, High PE stocks are out, low PE multiple stocks are in. Okay. Sounds great, Why? but you have to execute the plan. Right. Um, in the last five years, this hasn't been the plan. And, and um, why particularly? Well, you know, there's the old, that saying that the market sets the right price. The market is always correct. The market's um, always right, yeah. Well, in the old days when Jen and I were brokers back in the 80s, you used to have P multiples in the t in the teens. Yeah. If if you had a if you had a fifteen multiple stock, that was a high multiple. You had a five multiple, it was low. Mm -hmm. And so once a stock got into the twelve to fifteen multiple, we would go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. these guys a little, had a little big for their bridges. These guys had better blow away numbers every three months to mm -hmm. justify these prices. Today. Apple is in the 30s. Microsoft is in the 30s. <laughs> Amazon came along. <laughs> Amazon has always been in the 50s, the 60s, 70s. Uh, Tesla is. And they made profit for the first decade. No. And so, <laughs> so uh, in today's world, without 12% interest rates that Jen and I had to deal with, when the interest rates are 12%, your P multiples are 15. When interest rates are zero and less than inflation, multiples can be 30, 35. This makes sense because mm -hmm. money goes to where money can get a return. And mm -hmm. it used to be mm -hmm. that we would compete, Jen and I. We'd have clients call us up and say, hey, listen, uh, what kind of stocks do you like? And uh, what kind of companies are you recommending you buy? You know, What's your firm saying? Mm -hmm. And we'd refer to our research department, you know, go through our research analytical reports and say, oh, uh, uh, they're recommending that you buy um, IBM or uh, General Electric. And, the yield is six and a half percent on the, the dividend, and uh, it's trading at a thirteen time PE multiple, and the growth prospects look great. And then the customer said, "Yeah, but you know, I was talking to my uh, loans officer or my bank manager the other day, and they have a five year GIC that's giving me six and a half percent interest on my mm -hmm. money, and it's guaranteed by the bank, where you are only get offering me a six percent yield on a stock that could go down." Yeah. Uh, so, or I think bonds. people were buying corporate bonds. I'll just put my money in yeah. the bank and leave it there because I want to sleep at night. And I like you as a broker, and thank you for all your help. But you make nothing. Uh, so we would <laughs> lose money to the banks because they could offer interest rates that were so good that stocks had no way of competing. Well, right now banks can't do that. You go to your local bank and say, "Hey, how much can you give me for five grand? If I give you five thousand for five years, what kind of interest rate can you give me on my money?" 
I mean, if you can get 1%, you're laughing. But that's about all you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, where right now, you can give uh, $5,000 if you want to any stock you want because of this and platform trading. You'll buy partial shares. You can buy partial ETFs, high-yielding ETFs, or dividend-paying stock, and you'll get more than 1%. Yeah. And the odds are you're always going to get more than 1% for the next five years without worrying about the stock price. And so... That's what's happening. And so today, Google and Microsoft and Facebook and Amazon and, and Apple and others, they're trading at 20, 30, 30 35 times PE multiples because yeah. uh, they can deliver That's a dividend a of 2%, 1.5%, and they'll raise their dividends. And they're doing stock buybacks, which they didn't do in the 80s. They didn't do no. stock buybacks. There weren't that many shares out there in the 80s. Um, and so they're doing stock buybacks, which effectively, me, effectively means they pay less out in dividends than they said they would, because you only pay dividends out to the shares that are outstanding. Mm -hmm. If you buy back 5% of your stock every year, you only have 95% of the shares out there that you're going to pay dividends to next year. And the year after that, it's down to 90%. And the year after that, it's down to 85% of the stock outstanding. So your dividend payouts in dollars never go up. The, you raise your dividend to maintain your dividend payout dollars, but you're paying more money to each share outstanding because there are fewer shares every year outstanding, justifying stocks to go up in price, mm -hmm. yields to stay current, and they're beating banks uh, at their own game. And that's why corporate America on the stock market is doing great overall, and banks uh, are, are having trouble attracting cash because we're, you can't get paid by the bank. The bank can't pay it. The bank is borrowing money for nothing from the Fed, lending it to you at four, five, six percent. Yeah, that's how the banks are working. So there you have it. There you go. Yeah, that's what's going on. The market is always right. The market's always right. The market never lies. The market never lies. Um, right. I look at these stock prices and I go, "This is ridiculous." Uh, some of these are so low. This is stupid. But the market never lies because that's what the market thinks they're worth today. If the market thought SoFi was worth $100 right now, it would, it would be, be trading at $100. Yeah. But the market doesn't think that. It thinks it's worth $14.85 right now, which I think is stupid. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but then I know the future. I can see the future. I've been around see to see how these do over time when they do what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. And what SoFi is doing corporately is telling me this is a $100 to $200 stock down the road. But how far is the question? Have you got the patience to wait it out? There it is. There it is. There it is. Simple. You got the patience to wait for an everything bagel? Or, or, or. I'm thinking of an everything bagel Are today. You, ham. Look, at that. look how I know you. I can ham, just look in those cheese, little brown eyes. Egg, ketchup to dip it in. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. The it. everything bagel is what we need to get this market going. Yeah. I have to find a small pan. What do you think? Ooh, I, oh, think we'll I think you'll find something to work with. If uh, not, it'll be folded like a McDonald's. Oh. Very thin <laughs> folded egg. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. All right, Jeff. Thank you so much uh, for uh, for that. I can't wait. Um, Thanks for the rant. Let's see. Uh, that's the rant, baby. Thanks for the rant. Six terras up thirteen cents. Uh, unchanged on the ATIP at three thirty five. We're down only a dime on Smart Rent. We're down twenty one on Spire. Waiting for a turnaround there. Spire got as low as three twenty eight. We're at three thirty now. ME down 17, uh, Matterport down 78, GameStop down 335 at 145.56. We're 45 minutes into the market. GameStop has not had a real rally yet. It had a dead cat bounce this morning. We opened at 148, got down to 144.83, 145.56 right now. Uh, I'm I'm looking at uh, co GameStop contracts. Might be 150s for Friday, 148s for Friday, 149s for Friday, depending on the yield, the kind of dividend you can get. What kind of premium can you get? Dividend yield. Uh, what can you get on this thing? Um, can you get uh, for, on GameStop a uh, dollar a day on your GameStop contract? That's what I'm looking for for writing a GameStop contract. I want a dollar a day on a GameStop contract. I'm looking at con on options right now on GameStop. I'm just going to pop them up here, see if I can get this thing to work. For this Friday, as an example, uh, as of 15 minutes ago, these quotes 
somewhat current. A 146 contract was 390 to 460. A 147 was 335 to 435. A 148 was 310 to 390. These are the bid asks. A 149, 271 to 350. A 150, 246 to 299. If I could write a 150 contract for this Friday and get three bucks or more for a 150, I'd write it because I want a dollar a day in my pocket. If I scoop two bucks between today and tomorrow, I'm a happy guy. I want a dollar a day. Um, if I can write a 149 at 345, or if I can write a 148 for around four, 420, uh, and I can scoop a buck a day or more in the next 24, 48, 72 hours, I'm a happy guy. Writing next week calls, for example, the June, January 14 on GameStop, writing a 150 will bring me between 590 and 670. It's not enough money. I want a larger premium than that. I want a dollar a day for the next eight days. Well, to get eight dollars, I got to write a 145 at the money because it's an eight to nine, 10 bid ask. On the other hand, I can admit that I could write a 148 for next week Friday if I could get close to eight bucks for it and I can buy it back for say three dollars in five days or less, I make my dollar a day writing this contract. If I'm gonna write a contract a week further out, Jan 21 expiry, I can write 145, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, 150s. I can write them at a dollar a piece all the way up to 150 bucks each. A 150 contract for two and a half weeks will, will bring me anywhere from eight to nine dollars. A 149 between 820 and 1010. A 148 will bring in anywhere from uh, uh, eight and a quarter to 1070. A 147, 875 to 1095. So I'd be looking at 150s and I'd be looking at at least 950, 945 to 995. If I were writing 149s, I'd be looking at maybe 1045 to 1095. I'd be putting in stink offers for a little bounce up on GameStop to give me those premiums. And again, if I can make a dollar a day between now and six, seven days from now, I can make a buck a day anywhere in that window for each of those days. I'm buying them back. And that's why I put in stink bids to lock in those kinds of profits. That's what I'd be looking at on GameStop at this moment at 145.18 down 373 a share. The shares don't want to give us capital gain. They're going to pay us to write options. If I have to do rollovers, so be it. Uh, but uh, you give me a three, four dollar move from here. These contracts should trigger out and you should be able to write some calls and bring in money on your GameStop. And let's see what it gives you later today, tomorrow. Friday? I don't know if a 150 is a barrier uh, for Friday or not. Um, I have no idea, but uh, the company isn't talking and the volume on GameStop, uh, last I'm seeing, uh, not even 260,000 shares, 253,000. That's not gonna cut it, man. That is not cutting it with me for a uh, move on this stock. It's just so weak, it's so quiet. Nothing is going on. Anyway, there's my take on that one at this moment in time. We've gone positive now on ATIP again. We're up three cents to 338. Spire is now 330. It's improved. It's still down though, 22 cents, uh, only up two from the low. Not great. Sixth era up eight. Smart rent down eight. AMC down 91 cents. Uh, writing $26 calls for Friday might be the way to go on AMC. Uh, let's going to take a look here if I can find an AMC option quote. If you guys want to write an AMC contract, let's see what kind of premiums you can get on AMC right now. 2452 was the last trade on the stock, uh, down 98 cents. Uh, volume is 6 million or less. Not a lot of volume here. Not good at all. Um, let's go, baby. Uh, Jan Sevens. All right. $26 contract will get you around 48 to 50 cents a share. A $25 contract that's out of the money by 50 odd cents will bring you 82 to 87 cents a share. You want to buy, you want to write a call option for next Friday on AMC. 26 will bring you 126 to 131. Uh, you might want to write it around that 130, uh, 129 level, 134 level, and uh, see if that stock will just pay you to hold it. If, if you can score a 50% gain or better, on this contract, then you write it. If you're happy buying it back at 51 cents after writing it for 139, 129 to 134, 
nice little contract right for the next uh, eight, nine days. Uh, that's the way to go. One, a 25 will bring you 165 to 171, uh, but a what, 26 will bring you 126 to 130. A 27 will bring you 97 to 99 cents. That, as a contract, you could write that might just expire worthless. Uh, you could write a 28 for 73 to 77 cents. Same thing. You go a week further out to Jan 21 on AMC, you can write a 26 for 178 to 80, 188. I wouldn't write it. A 27 to 146, 53, not enough. A 30 will get you 85 to 88. If you want something really conservative, write a $30 call option for a two week out contract on AMC. You'll likely just let it expire worthless. But it's up to you uh, what kind of risk tolerance you have to write those calls. Check your option chains and see for yourself. Dow is up 82 points. It's climbing. Uh, S&P up 120, NASDAQ down 80. The hope I have is that some of these stocks pop up a little bit and give you some premiums that you can score on some of these contracts. Um, Rocket Lab right now still down at 11.27, down 38 cents a day, the low of the day, 11.24. SoFi, 14.85, we're down 20 cents, low of 14.72. GameStop, 144.91, it's down $4, the low of the day, 144.20, we're at 145.01. We're up 80 cents from the low. I'd like to see a four or $5 bump and then pop into 150s, uh, take out the 150s, sell them. Uh, Matterport, uh, for, uh, 1747, the low, 1722. Uh, ME, 665, low of the day, 658. We're down 14 cents. Um, Spire, 329. Uh, ATIP, 336, up a penny. Smart Rent, down 4 cents now at 912, a little better. Sixtera is up 9, 1226. Um, IBM, up $1.60 to 139, 62, going for 140 bucks. Dow is up 102 now. Microsoft still down 570. It's better, but it's down. Apple is down 85 cents. Uh, still, you can write 182s to 185s for this Friday or next Friday or even the Friday after that. Further out you go. Uh, Tesla up 11.96 at 11.61. Uh, 11.80s to 1200s are perfect option rights there. Um, and Goldman uh, 409.74 up 226. Just can't seem to do a breakout from here today. Uh, so we might be topping out temporarily. Uh, Cisco popped again up 30, but uh, just doesn't have um, mega, mega momentum. It is up 30, 61.55, but it got to 61.64. The low of the day, 60.91. Um, the lower it gets, it might kind of go up one and down two steps. It might do that for a bit. Um, but if you do have, if you've written calls on on, gain, on on Cisco, uh, lower levels, and now you've got it coming back to you, look for the opportunity to do a rollover where you can get out of the call you wrote and ride into higher calls on rallies like this. Uh, that might be your strategy going forward. Amazon down 12 bucks, Facebook down 280, Google down $32. That's where we're at right now, and I'm way behind on comments. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> let's go, let's go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we have German cars. One's a diesel. We might as well be grinding up baby seals for fuel, <laughs> but 450 miles a tank. Um, let's see. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. My buddy has a Tesla, and he's never cared for zero to 60 until now. The thing has shockingly smooth pickup. Um, and uh, let's go. I love my Tesla Model Y. I have to wait a year for the S Plaid model. Horsepower is insane. I know these, these are incredible machines. Absolutely incredible. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, B fits Bruce. My portfolio most mostly so far March April calls. Was 110 grand at the heights. Now it's 30 grand. I need SoFi to move, but is there anything I could be doing to help myself out? I don't have much more powder. Uh, SoFi 1481. Uh, we're just looking for the turnaround, and when it happens, it'll be brutal, massive, phenomenal, and um, you just got to sit tight and uh, just wait this out. This stock is a $100 company disguised at the 1480 stock at this moment. Just sit tight. Dr. Walter, uh, GM, uh, EVs can change when demand is low and balance of the grid. Also, vehicle to grid and commercial fleets can create giant battery resources during peaks. Um, 
Um, it's no problem. Folks, don't be here too hard on me. Uh, B fits, you're good. You're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. Um, yeah, Octavio, Ford's Mach-E was compared to the Model Y by Edmunds and it's better value, but they messed up by calling it a Mustang. I, I fix Teslas for a living, and I can tell you a lot about them. Baby shop business, a uh, body shop business, right on. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, Adventures of Duncan, B-Fits, welcome, no worries. Uh, I feel your pain, B-Fits, says Nelson, no problem. Uh, no worries, no worries, no worries. Uh, GW, I opened GameStop 160 covered calls last week for expiry this Friday. I wrote them at 515. I just bought them back for 80 cents. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Um, let's see. Um, let's go. Let's go. Well done, says Coyote. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, to quote John Electra, uh, John Travolta, it's electrifying. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Bruce, I can feel greed creeping up on me. Is it uh, foolish to write GameStop 155's expiring Friday? No, it's not foolish at all. Um, we're sitting here at 144.51, down 440. Uh, we got the Dow up 90. We got S&P still down half a point. We got NASDAQ down 90. It's not participating yet in this run for the Dow. <clears throat> um, let's see. How comfortable were you charging that car when you drove to Arizona? Oh, it's no problem whatsoever. None whatsoever. We, we left here with 281 miles of range, which is all this car has. It's not the high mileage uh, version of a Tesla. It's a single engine, uh, rear wheel drive Tesla only with 281 miles of total range. The dual motor high miler is 360 miles. I'd prefer that car, but nonetheless, we only drive 100 miles to Quartzsite from here to fuel up again, charge up. 20 minutes later, we're charged up. And it's the equivalent of like two bucks a gallon for gas. It's the equivalent of that. And I'm driving fast. I am not at 60 miles an hour or anything. I'm going at 75, 79, 84. We are flying. And we were in 100 degree temperature, full air conditioning. I couldn't care less. It was cheap. Uh, we charged up in Quartzsite, made it to Phoenix, still with 100 miles of range on it. And went into uh, uh, went to uh, Scottsdale, ch charged up its supercharger there. Twenty minutes, charged up again, and, uh, and that it was a no brainer. On the way back, same thing. Left Phoenix, all charged up. Got the quartz site, still 120 miles left on it. Charged up in 15, 20 minutes, and came into Palm Desert. Not a problem at all. Absolutely no problem. Uh, yes, there's an entire business model in Bucky's that built uh, that's built on creating a shopping center at a gas station. They could easily pivot to electric. Absolutely, you take 80 gas pumps away, leave 20 gas pumps, and put in 60 charging stations. It's a joke. The gas stations will make money charging cars for a living instead of fueling up cars for a living. Uh, it's it's a it's a no brainer. It's a three five year turnaround. The entrepreneurs of this country will have no trouble jumping on this bandwagon. And, and those <clears throat> electric cars that are charging for 15 minutes, guess what they're doing? They're coming inside the store. They're buying chips, cola, snacks, going to the bathroom, spending all kinds of money. No brainer. Wait till semis get electric. They charge up for half an hour, for an hour. No big deal. It's no big deal at all. Truck drivers need showers. They need lunch. They need whatever they need personally. Make a phone call. Check the internet. It's a no-brainer. It's absolutely not a problem. Anyway, there you go. There you go. All right. Um, and a hey, well, electric would not have worked in the last two days. Uh, people with electric come from the air. Yeah, look, you know, I, I hear you. You know, when you have a big-time blizzard and you shut down expressways, it's a problem. Yeah, well, that's called weather. It's not an electric problem. That's a weather problem. If you are out there pushing Mother Nature around and defying her to drive your four-wheel drive, whatever, through whatever you want to drive through, because it's a you know diesel-powered whatever you have, you're still going to get stuck on the I-95. Uh, four-wheel drive helped nobody get through the I-95. It was stopped. And Electric, gas, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference, but I get you. Some people are going, well, if I had electric and I was down to 30% power and then I got stopped, oh, am I going to run out of juice? Maybe, maybe not, because once the electric is parked, 
you put the heat on at 60 degrees, you have to- you have blankets in your car if you're driving in the winter. If you know anything about winter driving, you have blankets in your car to stay warm even at 60 degrees. You're fine. Uh, not a problem. Anyway, <clears throat> what can I say? Uh, do what I can. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, sorry, I'm just, uh, just uh, ranting and raving today. Oh, I'm ranting and raving. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, um, I agree. Uh, Erico says, Rob says, Erico, uh, I agree. I was looking at those 155s. They were like $2, $3 this morning, so I don't know about the 139 for three days. I'm not so excited about 139 at 155s, but 150s I might be interested in. We'll see how this goes. Bobby, um, well, I've seen the left and right arm of Auntie Jen now. Larry, good morning, Jen. Um, <clears throat> Erico, I don't think so, says Merkel. I wrote a 152.50 yesterday for 367 um let's see i need more premium says uh, alberto good morning jen so far justifies logic i agree uh let's see Coyote, rob yeah it ain't worth it for me you have to write an at the money to really benefit from it <clears throat> um um I, and i it's never been near the game I, I, it's never and this has been near gamestop average low for a while now seems bound to go up a bit at some point uh, Arico, thanks, Coyote, uh, Rob, Alberto, Alvis, Mirko. I do agree with you all 100%. I just need to start generating some dough, and I'm growing impatient. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Dr. Walter, let's go. Perhaps not thin air, but you can sure harvest a lot of electricity from windy air and sunlight. Um, let's see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what else is going on here? What else are going to... Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm trying to catch up on these comments here. I'm trying to avoid uh, a lot You're of talk to between catch people. Up a lot of catch up between catch it. Up on them. Oh, I got a, nice I got. Oh, I got. I got a smart ass coming in here. <laughs> help me! Help me! Now you know why the ratings are under pressure. Oh, uh-huh. uh. There you go. Here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the cheese melting. We didn't actually buy ham yesterday. Oh, we didn't have cheese slices. So we have to so I've got bacon here. So you've got bacon. And this other cheese. Because you know, yeah. I'm Canadian. We always have what's wrong with bacon bacon in the fridge. Nothing wrong with bacon. And that's that that lovely old um uh Irish cheese. I can't tell you the name of it, but it's nice and sharp. I know the community will be surprised to hear that you buy it at Costco. <laughs> it's called tamarack or something possibly made up of those letters. I don't know. It's terrific. Terrific. It's, good, isn't it? it's nice and sharp. Mm. And and they didn't have a very small um, <laughs> frying pan. Yeah. So I actually cooked it in the smallest saucepan. Worked like a darn. <laughs> <laughs> the mother of invention, right? Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Everybody yeah. knows that. We're nomads. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. We don't have a house. We don't have a home. I don't have to dig a pit in the ground and put in hot coals. and No. So, I, you know, still pretty privileged with my problems. We got rid of a lot of our kitchen stuff when we moved. Um, oh, we sure did. You know, um, we've really... Um, we got rid of so much stuff. We offloaded crap we've had for decades and years. Not crap, high quality items that we had collected over the decades. Crap. <laughs> the hardest was the books. The hard, that was the hardest. Yeah, but you know, but. we're we're on the road now as traveling nomads. I know. And uh, we use other people's dishes and, and That's pots right. and pans. That's right. You can always rent a pillow somewhere. You really can. Well, no, we just, our first day in, we went to Walmart and bought body pillows. Big fan of body pillows, people. Get a body pillow. We are big fans of body pillows. Keep your hips stacked while you sleep. Stack them, rack them, and pack them. Stack them, rack them, and pack them. Okay. I don't even want to know where that came from. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty greasy. This is not a healthy bagel. No, 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 no. Mm. You know what I was thinking we should do for a Mm. little exercise? Uh Uh-oh. Dance lessons. What do you think? I don't think so. You you don't think you want to swing me around the floor, do a little West Coast swing? I can see it. Jen? 
Oh, maybe I could swing you since you're only four eight. I could just whip you around over my shoulders, under my legs. Yeah. It, it would definitely be exciting to watch. It's got me written all over it, doesn't it, kids? <laughs> but we can do the two step tango and merengue. <laughs> A little salsa. He dances a real good merengue. What movie is that from? That dances, guy. Oh, he have dances. you seen him? Oh. You've seen him dance a merengue? Oh, man. I I've never really. seen him dance. I've never seen him dance. <laughs> I never met the man before. What movie is that from? <laughs> These guys know everything. So I'm, I can't fool well, them. Well, I think in that one, we're going to be cutting out a lot of the younger viewers. That's a hint. The uh, younger viewers. All of my movie trivia. <laughs> Is not for younger people. <laughs> All of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got to get you up on uh, more of the uh, Netflix, Prime videos, Disney's, and, you know, yeah. in all your spare time. All my spare time I have. Right. When I'm done this second show every day, my primetime show tonight. Today's Wednesday. Yeah. Primetime tonight. That's right. It's the I'll only have, way, guys, that I keep track of the days of the week. I'll have minutes of time to burn to watch whatever movie I want to watch on all these pay-per-views. Before pay -per -view 8 o'clock pops, rears its ugly head in its bedtime. Yeah, yeah. I have minutes and minutes of glorious time to waste. I know. <laughs> we start to get tired right around 6.30. Yeah. So sad. <laughs> but it does not help that the sun goes down and it's really dark here. Yes, it is just true. like it's in Crescent. These people don't believe in street lights, so it's really dark. And your brain is going, bedtime, bedtime, go to bed now, bedtime. It's true. It's yeah. true. Once it gets dark around here, we really, we hit the wall. Like, we hit our wall. And it and that's the beginning of the, that's the beginning of the end. Of the decline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beginning of the end. <laughs> oh. I was mm. feeling fine this morning, but now my nose is clogging up. But I think it's because they're mowing right in front of us. Oh. So I got a little stuff in the air. Some of my viewers beginning to mention how COVID is closing in. Oh, yes. I just assume everybody has it when I go out now. I, I just assume everybody out there has it. That yeah. nasty cold that everyone's getting. Yeah. And just hope that you're that you're vaccinated. We had a, a child, they won't tell you very much about children, but it's a child between the ages of five and nine died yesterday in Calgary mm. from COVID. From COVID. I just, I would just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how parents survive that. I don't know either. I, I don't know. Not well. Not well. Uh, not easily. Forever not well. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, on that lovely cheery note. Well, <laughs> the and good yet news there... is, though, that our daughter and her friends and family and they've they've all come out the other side and they're doing okay. There you go. So far, um, I mean, it's still really early um, to see if there's any long term residual effects. Oh, I, I know it's a big one. Stop. Here, I'll take it. I'll take it. Plus, you know, you don't really chew. Oh, thanks. I can't drink any more of this bagel. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. Okay. Jen, thank you so Bye, folks, much. Make money. Dare to be great. Dare to be great. Dare to be great. Dare to write. Dare to write and Dare be, great. be great. Oh, man. Who cares is saying, hey, who cares? Uh, who's doing covered calls on IBM? I need some idea how to set up covered calls on IBM. Uh, well, you buy an in-the-money contract on the stock. Maybe you buy 120s, 110s, um, even 100s, and then you write contracts against those. Uh, poor man covered calls. Lesson number eight. Check it out. Um, Nelson, so far, 2250 expiry, Jan 21. Should I ride or or die till the end and pray for charter ROL? Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> so far, 1479, down 26 cents today. You need 2250. Jan 21, you have 16 days. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you're you're already dying uh, because there, there's no value to these contracts. 
So, you know, you got to be looking at uh, May's, June, July's already. And you should already be acquiring if you can. If you have any capital, you should be acquiring, say, 1250s or, or 15s here and to be right within this market range. That's where you want to be now and uh, and start picking these off. Um, that's where you got to go. Mm, let's see. <clears throat> uh what's going on um mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. yeah not a loss until you sell just remember you're holding an asset it's not winning until it's green uh, i'm with you there um let's see um uh, Yeah, well, oil provides a lot of jobs in the Middle East. Take away oil away from the Middle East and you think you watch global politics uh, change dramatically, I'm sure. You're not going to take oil away overnight from any, anywhere. Uh, oil is still going to be very much needed for many other uses other than just burning inside a, 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 a gasoline engine or a diesel motor. There are a zillion other uses for oil uh, that we uh, need it for. And oil will always be a necessary tool going forward. But uh, by just burning it up into the atmosphere is uh, is kind of uh, a waste of that precious resource in a funny kind of way. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Let's see what else is going on. Um, Tori's wondering, how much lower are we going to go? Are we going to keep heading down? I, I don't think so. Uh, but, you know, we're going to have a down day from time to time. That's all it is. Um, Bama, hey, my strategy on SoFi options is in January, I have two calls made months ago at a $20 strike. Been down a while, so I picked up 10 SoFi calls at $14.50 strike to counterbalance. Let's go SoFi. I need you to go up. We're only off $0.25 cents right now. We're not down $4 a share. We're down a quarter. Yeah, the accumulative effect is, is torturous. But um, the turnaround is going to be a dramatic turnaround when it starts to happen. What can I say? Uh, Will, thinking of buying more calls on SoFi, April 1250s? Um, yes, uh, April 1250s, um, um, May, June, July's uh, as well. Further out, the better. But yes, who fixes Tesla for a, Tesla's for a living? Uh, Joe, uh, Bruce is the wolf. He drives real stinking fast. Uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's see here. Um, and um, Uncle Bruce, I tried to get the Tesla charging stations. I'm still waiting for them to call me. Uh, okay. Um, and let's see. Um, let's go. Let's go. Um, yeah, I have I have a, a friend who, a close friend, owns multiple gas stations. They make little money, very little money selling the gas. I, I hear you. If you could get out of the gasoline business, or get rid of 80% of the gasoline business and turn it into the electrical business instead. I think you could do very well with it. Um, you definitely make margins. Uh, Got to start my day job now. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Nazareth. Uh, you take care. Um, let's see. Um, and, uh, well, there you go, uh, Gayoti. And, yeah, I agree with Rob. One of the things I most like about Uncle Bruce is, is and it shows is that he helps us remain calm and rational during irrational times. I would be a mess if it was all alone here. Um, I finally got a couple hundred Matterport. Now we can go back to 25. Thank you very much. Uh, there you go. Crazy talk, says Anti-PC. Crazy talk. Um, let's see. Um, I love Jen so much. Uh, um, 336 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let me know what number you are on your thumbs ups um, uh, scale. Thank you. Um, let's go. What else is going on? We're at, we're at now, what, 109 points on the upside on the down near the high. We're down five points on S&P. We're down 136 on NASDAQ. Um, what else is going on? Um, 
144.08 on GameStop, down 483. The low of the day, uh, 143.38, uh, still under pressure. Uh, Rocket Lab down 41. SoFi down 26. Um, Matterport down 75. Emmy down 18 cents. Spire at $3.30, down 21. ATIP down one penny, 334. Smart Rent down a nickel, uh, but coming back on. Sixtera up 11 now, holding a gain right there. Um, oh. IBM up 231 to 14033. 14033 on IBM. Uh, the Dow up 110, 111. Microsoft down 686 with a big Dow gain, but not NASDAQ gain. Apple down 127. Tesla down $1.77. Goldman at 408, up 55 cents. Uh, Goldman is doing what I figured it would do. And uh, Hopefully, some of you have scored some nice premiums on your Goldman Sachs contracts. Cisco up 24 cents at 61.49. Not going anywhere at the moment. Um, Amazon down 22. Facebook down 550. Google down $53. We're under pressure on these uh, markets today. Uh, Moderna down 422. Reluctantly dropping a little bit, but not with much volume. All right, there you go. Um, waiting to see what the market's going to bring us. The Dow wants to be higher. S&P going eh, and the NASDAQ definitely staying negative at this point. Uh, but for how much longer is the question, is this going to turn? It might. It just might. All right. Uh, let's see. Dancing is fun. Uh, do it. Do it. Dance to Yoko. Thanks, Lair. Uh, Shaky Fry. Did you, how did you unload your used books? Uh, dump. Uh, we gave us away as many as we could. Uh, and the rest went to the dump. Uh, couldn't give them away. Could not give them away to any used bookstores. They were drowning in them. No one, no one else wanted them. We dumped them. Um, that's just the way it is. Got to move on. Uh, you ain't, don't mean to think if you ain't got the swing. Um, let's see. Uh, Uncle Bruce, do it. Dance lessons Tuesday, Thursday. Put it on the channel. It would be great. Uh, wouldn't it be great to see Jen swinging Bruce around? Um, <laughs> uh, BW, so far you're killing me. Why do you not like the price at 14? Uh, it's not your friend. Twenty dollars is where you want to be. Come up here. That's where your friends are. Um. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. Um, Spire announced the upcoming uh, virtual event, the CJS Securities 22nd Annual. New ideas for the new year. Investor conference, January 12th, 2022. That's in seven days. Uh, and new COVID found in France. News radio says it combines the COVID and flu. Uh, let's see. Um, mm, 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 mm. I can't drink any more of that bagel. I can't. I can't inhale it anymore. I'm dull. I'm all done. Just filled up. That was so thick. Um, GameStop headed to 130. Says Arico. That's where I think it's going. He says. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go, let's go. Rudy, Matterport got too painful, dumped all my call options, holding one put that I wrote might roll come March 22. This has been a real disappointment. Uh, go in the corner, Mr. Hunt, says, uh, says, uh, Auntie, um, laughing out loud. Fine, he says, oh, she's laughing. Uh, Ritesh, to clarify, I tried to buy Tesla charging stations. I'm also trying to buy gas stations and convert them to Tesla charging stations. I hear what you're saying there. Um, I went and bought 60, uh, 2250 so far for April uh, back when they were in the money. I'm sweating bullets here, but it feels like there's some good time for them to make it back. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm number 341. I'm thumbs up number 343. I'm number 347, says Jen Doe. Welcome. Thanks, everybody, for popping in here and becoming a thumb upper today. I appreciate it. What, what is it with women and dancing? Every woman ever wants to go dancing. Garza like Uncle Bruce. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, uh, do you Latin dances? A little cha-cha perhaps? Um, yeah, here we go. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> lame duck. I'm thumbs up number 357, Uncle B. Uh, that's what I am. Right on, everybody. Thank you. Uh, 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 the Dow is up 82. Um, S&P down 4.8. NASDAQ down 126. Um, and uh, Peloton stock falls to a fresh low, they say. Analysts are worrying about weakening demand for the company's product line.
Oil up 97 cents at 77.96. GameStop 143.84 down 507. The low 143.38. Waiting for a little bounce up to get some calls written on uh, GameStop. Matterport down 89 to 1733. The low of the day 1722. Um, Rocket Lab down 40 at 1125. SoFi down 23 to 1482. The low of the day 1468. Um, ME down 18 cents to 661. Low of 658 on ME. Spire low of the day 328 now 332. Uh, ATIP up again, up two pennies at 337 right now. The low of the day 331. We're improving just slightly. Smart rent down only three cents. Six era up eleven now to twelve twenty eight. AMC under pressure twenty four twenty three. Robinhood down fifty cents. Matic vectors down two seventy five. Home Depot down three eighteen has improved. Got as low as four oh six. Now back to four oh nine. IBM one hundred one hundred forty dollars eighteen cents up two sixteen. Uh, the Dow up ninety nine and a half. Microsoft 322 a share. Uh, the low of the day 320.87 at 322.30 down 671. Over on Apple we're down a dollar 12. The low 177.97. The high of 180. We haven't had much movement here. We're at 178.58 down to 112 on Apple. Tesla up two dollars 41 cents to 11.52. Uh, we have Black uh, Bed Bath Beyond down 59. BlackBerry down four. Royal Caribbean up 12 cents to 82.50. Goldman uh, up 29 cents to 407.78. Goldman looks like it's coming off a bit now, approaching uh, 407.31, which is a low of the day. We're about 45, 47 cents away from that. Uh, Cisco up 8 cents, 61.33. Got as high as 61.64 today. 61.33 up 8, low of 60.91. I think we're going to hit new lows on Cisco today. We're going to get some more coming in, I think. Amazon down 18, uh, Facebook down five and a quarter, Google down 51 bucks, uh, Target up 27 cents, JP Morgan up 77 cents, uh, Costco down 450, <clears throat> Walmart up 340 a share. Um, let's go, Royal, uh, where are we at? American Airlines up 32 cents, um, Moderna down 376, Intel holding a 265 gain at 5576, doing well. Micron up 131 to 97.65. That's where we're going here. Um, and uh, let's see, there we are. 11.30 on Rocket Lab, 14.85 on SoFi. Only down 20 cents now on SoFi, 14.86 now. The low of 14.68, we're bouncing off the low right now. Smartly, let's see how far it wants to go. 144 on GameStop. 144.15, about $1.20 off the low of the day on GameStop. A little clip higher, but I don't know how much. We're at, we've got a 77-point gain on the Dow. We're backing up a bit there. We're down 3.5 on, uh, on S&P 500. And we're down 110 on NASDAQ right now. All right. Uh, let's see here. Dancing is fun, says Anti-PC. I love to dance. Um uh, let's go. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm number 365, says Mallow. I'm thumbs up 365. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see Uncle Bruce and Auntie Jen dance the Adams Family uh, Mamushka. Uh, <laughs> I like the guitar. I like that guitar. It sounded good. I started moving around to the music, swinging my hips. <laughs> Uh, everyone's a dance now, laughing out loud. Uh, make sure everyone watches tomorrow. It's in bed with Uncle Bruce, Andy PC. No, thank you, Mirko, uh, like John and Yoko did. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Oh, you, kid, you kids, you crazy kids, uh, putting Jen and I in harm's way. Six Terra up seven. ATIP is up three. Those are the up stocks. Smart rent is down a nickel. It's so close. Uh, ME is only down 14. Come on. You can come around. You can. You will. You must. Well, let's see what happens. Um, oh, my God. NTPC is saying, oh, my gosh. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> we now have 368 thumbs-ups on this telecast, despite this lousy market. 
you know, some days are just are just not great days. Uh, what are you going to do? It just doesn't want to go with you, and you got to take it. We have 412 people hanging in here. Tough, tough crowd hanging on. I appreciate you being here with me, and we'll just see what's going on. Damn it, Jim. Okay, I'm, I'm off to work. Going to go take a nap. See you later. There you go. Go to work, get a nap, and then come back. <laughs> That's a good job you got there. Uh, go to work to sleep. SoFi 1482 down 23 cents. Come on back, SoFi. You know you can, you must, you want to. 1754 on Matterport. Bring it on, baby. Let's go. Uh, Spire still down at 332. We're up three on ATIP, 338. Uh, now the nickel on smart rent up seven on six. Stara. That is what we're doing. Uh, we're at uh, 14010 on IBM up 208. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing. Goldman 407.68 up 20 now. 407 even on Goldman, down 48 cents. Goldman is now negative uh, for the day. Uh, 406.83 is the low, and we're just pushing that now. The low of the day is being set by Goldman now, after topping out at 412.57. That's all it could muster, and we're now down to 406.80, down 68 cents. New low of the day for Goldman Sachs. So those of you who've written calls on Goldman, keep your eye now on your contracts. And if you get a nice little pullback as you want it, um, get ready to buy your calls back. Put in stink bits. Let's see what happens. I would love a week of steady green, says Gayoti. Uh, damn it, I'm not uh, not off to. I'm off. I'm off work. Oh, I'm off, I'm now. I'm getting a nap. I got you, damn it, Jim. It's good. It's been so long. We need green. It has G. It has will. Remember that day SoFi popped to 1680. Beautiful thing. Love to see that go to 2680. That's what I'd like to see on that one, baby. Let's make it happen. Come on, baby. Make it happen. You know you can. You want to. You need to. You must. 40660 on Goldman. The low of the day has been set and we're falling off. Uh, the Dow is up only 81 now. Uh, S&P is down 2.5. NASDAQ down 100. 406.35, new low on Goldman. Another new low trade on Goldman. 406.35 has just been touched on Goldman. Down about 80 cents, 90 cents, something like that. Um, Where are we here? Yeah. Come on, man. Need that GameStop. Give us a little pop so we can write some contracts. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not a lot to get excited about, kids. Not an awful lot. I have to admit, it is one of those uh, one of those days uh, with not a lot happening. Um, and that is the deal. Um, if any of you are looking for one-on-one -on -one consultations, uh, let me know for this Friday and Saturday. Um, I have uh, two openings left on Sunday. I have three on Saturday if you're interested in one of those. See if we can get together with you and um, go over your account, your portfolio, your hopes, dreams, hopes, wishes, dreams, and, and, and everything else. Aspirations, as it were. 378 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, for those. We're only 22 away from 400 thumbs ups. Thank you very much for uh, being there for that. Um, what else is happening? We're up 71 on the Dow, down 3.7 on S&P, and down 105 on NASDAQ. Oil is up a buck forty a barrel to seventy eight forty two at the moment. Three hundred seventy eight thumbs ups. Twenty two to go to get to four hundred thumbs ups. Thank you one and all for putting us within a whisker of getting to four hundred thumbs ups. Three seventy nine now. Another one just came in. Appreciate that. Three eighty. There's another one. Here they come. Love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's a sea of red today. Um, the S&P is down. The NASDAQ is down. Uh, Dow's up 76, but that's not convincing a lot of folks to go crazy and jump in to buy stock everywhere. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of money on the sidelines looking for places to go, and they will find our stock. Sooner or later, they'll go, these are cheap. Maybe we should buy these. Uh, these could easily double from here. I mean, some of these stocks are dirt cheap. We should get into those. Oh, that's what I'm kind of wondering. Uh, you know, kind of wondering, waiting, wondering why, 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 um, why not? Um, hmm. Uh, never, never a fun, fun moment when it's down, but that's the way it is. Sometimes you write options and you score when stocks go down. Rocket Lab down 38 cents. Uh, SoFi down 24 at 1481. 
Uh, GameStop 14366 down 526. Matterport down 64 to 1758. ME down 20 to 659. Spire down 20 to 332. ATIP up a half a penny. Smart Brent <clears throat> only down three. It's coming back. Uh, it's trying to come back. Uh, we're unchanged on Sextera. It is coming back. Uh, times are hard. This should get your bagels for the week. Your idiot nephew, Alberto. Thank you, Alberto for making a, a PayPal donation when there are no PayPal donations being made these days. I appreciate that. Uh, as always, uh, you are very kind to me, and uh, we uh, do appreciate these. These keep us around here a little longer, keeping us on the air, and we thank you. Uh, we will keep working and keep building the, uh, the channel as much as we can with you and uh, give you the info we can get you to help you make money in up days, down days, and sideways days. What do you what we will do we'll work hard uh shire studios oh look at that thank you shire for this uh, uh super chat appreciate that uh keeping us on the air thank you very much we will keep going uh thank you uh british shilling hey uh thumbs up number 376 i'm chiming in i, I just got here uh thank you british shilling appreciate that uh uh, nice. Arico, too long, Coyote. It feels like we've had two weeks of green days and 50 weeks of red days. Well, you are earning your, you're earning your keep in this market now. If you can survive these days of just grinding, you end up making all the money because you stick around and don't let go. It's as simple as that. And way to go. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for uh, doing what you're doing. Um, DQ Shire Studios, US $400. Uh, Someone's asking somebody something. How much for consultation? Oh, there it is. I didn't miss the question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how much for consultation? $400 US for one hour private on camera consultation here. Send me a private email right over here. Say, Bruce, um, here we go. Send me an email to this address. Say, Bruce, I'd like to have a one on one with you. Um, I can offer you a Saturday, 10 in the morning Eastern time noon Eastern time or two in the afternoon Eastern time on Saturdays. Or I can offer you a 10 o'clock Eastern time Sunday or a 2 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday. The noon slot is gone already. Uh, so if you're interested, we have those available. If one of you would like a slot for a private one-on-one -on -one consultation, just let me know and say, Bruce, I would like to uh, order from you your such and such a time for whatever day. I will send you then a... Um, a PayPal link where you can make your payment and will lock in your time slot and slot and no one can take it from you. And then we'll get together and we'll we'll talk about anything you want. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about to help get you through to the other side of investing, the profit side, and uh, make you a better trader, better investor, and you name it. Um, Joe says, uh, so far, I hate you uh, with a stalker, <laughs> with a passion. <laughs> Oh, man. Adventure Duncan Bruce, my Starlink, the internet was delivered. Uh, Joe, okay, never mind, buy more. <laughs> I think it's time we throw some knee emojis at this market to get it going because it's just sitting there. It's not going up high enough, so it probably needs some inspiration. I had some bagel here. Maybe we need some knee emojis, and that will pop this market a little higher. Neat, neat, neat. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, Joe is saying, Adventure Duncan, uh, report back. Curious about the quality signal and otherwise uh, on that Starlink thing you're doing, okay? Neat emojis are coming on now. Ori is in there with neat emojis. And you know what happens? As soon as we start doing this, the markets always go higher. It's incredible. What a run. 58-point uh, gain on the Dow. Down 7.5 on S&P. Down 120 on NASDAQ. Let's see how this works out. Um, as the Larry Titus has thrown in his neat emojis, uh, here comes Austin Doerr with the emojis. Here's Sean and Wendy. God, his amazing emojis are coming. Zeta State has done it too. Here come the knees. Neat, neat, neat. They're all everywhere. You can just hear them everywhere. Neat, 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 neat. They're everywhere. Uh, laugh a lot. I just read cats love the Star Lake satellite dishes in Canada. They have a snow melt feature so the cats curl up on them and sleep. Laughing out loud. Neat, neat, neat. Oh, John Gill is in there. Uh, here come the knees. Uh, DQ is in there. Samuel is in there. Here come the knee emojis. You can't stop this market now. We're going higher and higher and higher. Mirko, here are the knees. Uh, Spire new at the low today. Not for much longer, Rob. We're going higher. Jamie White, knee, knee, 
neat, neat. There they go. We're going higher. It can't stop this market. We're on fire. Aurora, the neat emojis are coming out. Get out of the way. You'll be hurt if you stay in the way of these contracts and these stocks. You will be hurt, Papa Gamer. Here come the knees. They're coming. Neat, 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 neat. <laughs> I uh, love you guys. Thank you all so much for using your emojis, helping this market get going. Um, 405.96 on Goldman, down 153. That's actually good because we've got people who have been writing contracts against these and they need them to go down. Swiss Butter, Scott Brewer, they're here. Here come the neat emojis. They're coming in from all kinds of places around the globe. They're coming in. You cannot stop this market when the knees show up from everywhere. 53-point gain on the Dow. We're going higher. We're down 8 on um, S&P. We're down 123 on SoFi on, on uh, NASDAQ. BW threw in one of the knees. At least I got one in there. Way to go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Karim, a whole bunch of knees. Alex, neat, 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 neat. Here they are. You can't stop these kids. You, I don't even think about getting in the way of this market. You're going to get hurt. You'll get your feet stomped on the knee. The knee. The, we are the knights of knee. And we're going to go higher today on this market. Oh, my gosh. Uh, what can I say? Higher it must be. Uh, cannot be any downward movement on these markets. It's impossible. Not with the Knights of Knee on our side. It's impossible for the markets to go down. They can only go up. That's all they can do. <sighs> Too much fun, guys. Thank you so much for your participation, uh, donations, and thoughts and best wishes and thank you all thank you very very much uh wow uh fun times at the okay corral that's what it is <sighs> yo 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 all right there we go i'm taking care of some business over there the views keep coming thank you everybody we're now sitting at uh 20 minutes to go for our show. Thank you all so much for being here. There's that email address if you need to send me an email and you want to get together for a one-on-one. -on -one, you let me know, and we'll set you up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, and uh, we'll do those on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, you say thanks for your support on slow days, but you always talk about your Tesla granted rental. Maybe if you sad sacked it by stating your AMC Gremlin is on the fritz. <laughs> Common people will get that, you know. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm not driving a Model S. I'm only driving a Model 3. How's that? <laughs> Jeez. No, I have to thank you because you folks have got me here. Uh, many of you. I know that I've worked my tail off to make this happen. And uh, again, I, you know, I don't underestimate that. But, uh, you know, I know who I know where my bread is buttered. And it's you guys. And we try to have fun here as much as we can, even on down markets. We just try to power through it and not let it get to us. And, um, you know, we're going to be all right. We're going to make money. Uh, feels like the market took a Louisville slugger across my knees. Clap, clap, free W saying, Bobby, uh, thanks. Uh, take, uh, th th uh, thank a good break, Uncle Bruce. Take a good break. See you all in the afternoon. Bobby, uh, give the wifey her dance. Uncle B, um, make a 999 plane. It's the sevens are so yesterday. Uh, make a 999 plan. Oh, yeah. Butter, bread. Uh, yeah. A A Z. I've been here for almost eight months and I still don't know what exactly, what this exactly is, but neat, 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 neat. Uh, you gotta, you gotta go to the YouTube and uh, you have to type in Knights, K-N-I-G-H-T is Knights of Neat, uh, Monty Python. Just type that in there and you'll see all kinds of clips from the movie. Uh, Brian, it was it the, uh, the the search for the Holy Grail, and you'll see the scene that we all talk about all the time, the Knights of Me, <laughs> and we're just crazy, and we just picked that up, and we went with an Uncle Bruce. I say that in jest, you know that. I love you, WBW. You know it, uh, Bobby. Play that, play the video, Uncle B. Uh, DQ uh, laughing out loud. I can't play the video because if I play it, I get a I get a copyright strike on YouTube, so I can't actually play the video. You have to watch it on your own uh, and catch it. Wow, who doesn't know that movie? BW, uh, it, it, it was old Monty Python movies. Uh, Rob, it's just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound. That's right, where the uh, the knight won't let the other knight pass. And they have the fight. Uh, he loses an arm, and then he loses another arm, and then he loses a leg, and he loses another leg, and he still challenges him. 
<laughs> it's hilarious. And he go, ah, at least you gave the truth at the end. We, we're just crazy. That's all it is. We're nuts. Um, the keepers of the sacred word. Neat. Uh, even I know Monty Python. And I don't know much, says British Shilling. A DQ, a shrubbery. I would like a shrubbery. Bring us another shrubbery. Er, shrubbery. Uh, gotcha. I don't watch movies, too, as much as you can see. Uh, looks like I got to watch it now. Uh, Ferrigan, what's your favorite color, Bruce? Uh, Bobby. All right, we'll call it a draw. Cindy, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. Now cut down the largest tree in the forest with a herring. <laughs> Cindy, bring out your dead. Uh, bring out your dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Uh, so we'll call it a draw then. <laughs> That's right. Since you've chopped my arms and legs off, we'll just call it a draw then. It's just a draw. That's it. Uh, bring a sharp but not too expensive. That's right. Oh, we're having fun. Uh, that movie was wild and wacky. Um, you've got to watch it. It's silliness upon silliness. Uh, we have fun with that. Folks, we're trying to get somewhere on this market. We're doing all we can. Uh, you know, sometimes the markets will work with us. Sometimes it won't. Uh, Goldman is working today. Uh, for some folks out here, I have some option writers who've written Goldman Sachs contracts, poor man covered calls, um, and they've been writing uh, upwards of 405, 410, 415, 420 contracts, and we're now at 405.64 down at dollar 84 on the stock after topping out this morning at 412, and there were opportunities to write 415s today that are perhaps already beginning to pay off. So fantastic, kids. Uh, See how this works out. DQ, uh, you've got just two halves of a coconut and you're banging them together. Uh, yes, well, the life of Brian. John Cleese giving the sex ed demo in college. Sadly, that would never fly in this world today. Uh, Bama babe, uh, IT is loud on loud. A roach on a tree, just in case you're wondering. It's uh, 20 miles per hour or nine meters per second. Uh, Bobby Atkinson, meaning of life. Eriko, gotta run. Let's do this. Do the damn thing this afternoon. Let's do it today, British. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Um, Bobby, life of Brian was Jesus, brother. Um, Obama, babe, it's nothing. Bur it's a nothing burger today. Gaudi, I'm supposed to do actual work now. Um, British shilling, please see you, Bob. Uh, no G, don't do it. Uh, don't do it. I don't go to work. Um, I saw at Roach on a Tree. Um, <laughs> hey, Uncle B, I have a January 21 IBM 125 cover call. Sit tight and pray or buy back. Crikey. Uh, you might want to buy back and write new ones. Uh, I don't know if you're coming back on this on this IBM. It's not like it went up $10 in one day. This has been a slow, steady march higher here uh, to 139.92 right now. Certainly, it could come back to the 135 level, but I don't know if 125 is in your uh, genes right now. Uh, so... You have a Gen 21. You still have time, uh, 16 days, but only 16 days. Uh, if you can buy it back for pretty well just book value, then that's the way I would go. Um, if you can afford to buy two of them, uh, then buy it back and write covered calls on it um, as, a, as an in-the-money covered call. Uh, sell your in-the-money covered call that you have that's gone up nicely use uh, buy this one back and buy a second one of these and then use it as your new cover call writer writer going forward uh because of course the first cover call you have i'm assuming if you are doing poor man cover calls you are way up on that call um there you have it um that's a guess uh, just a thought from my end if it makes if it makes sense mind you you can't use a jan 21 as a covered call co contract because it dies in 16 days so you have to buy this one back you have to take a look at the one you've used. If you're using one already, I don't know if you are, but if you're using one already and you've gone up nicely on it, you now roll it into a further covered call, perhaps cheaper price, higher strike price, uh, and then uh, start writing covered calls against it. So check it out. Let's look into it, see what happens. So many strategies, so many ways to go. I need to make more, need to make more classes. Uh, what topics would you like me to cover? If I were to make new classes, uh, let me know. I know all about the uh, LLC idea. Uh, what are your thoughts on other topics you'd like me to cover if I were to make new classes for my website? Tell me if you want. FYI, a SPAC uh, CFBI Rumble is flying up today and Freedom version of YouTube. I'm sure Bruce will, will be over there soon enough. And Freedom version of YouTube. I don't know about that. 
Ah, uh, yes, we shall see. Uh, Monty Python class? Uh, maybe you could do a Monty Python class. Boop, boop. Get on our horses. Go to the whiteboard and uh, do a class. <laughs> Oh, man, we're up 69 on the Dow. We're higher. Um, we're down 550, 5.51 on, on S&P. We're down 124 now on NASDAQ. Oil price is up 130, uh, up $1.30 to 78.29 for oil. Up 130 a barrel to 78.27 on oil. That's what we have at the moment. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Reading the boring reports in plain English, Rob. I am a I am a shrubber. Um, um, my mine is Roger. My is Roger Shrubber. I arrange, design, and sell shrubberies. Uh, West Coast Swing Class. West Coast Swing Class. Uh, Uncle Bruce, why don't you simulcast on Twitch? Um, neat, neat, neat. So she's what happened? Where did you get a a horse that fast, a DQ, lo lo lobist, thou holy hand grenade at thine enemy, lobist, thou, <laughs> lobist, thou, they holy hand grenades at thine enemy. <laughs> oh boy, too much fun, too much fun. We're up 81 on the Dow, we're going higher now. The market is going up um we're down six on spot s p we're down 128 on nasdaq the big market is going higher is it affecting our stocks not by much uh, i don't see a lot happening here uh, not much going on right now still no big gains uh ibm though at 140 10 uh microsoft still down 630 apple down 67 cents it's a little better just a little little 406 on goldman uh still down on the day all right um no that's no ordinary rabbit be careful of those rabbits we are no longer the knights who say neat we are thou not the knights who say ek 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 uh, patang zoo boing uh hector uh, i have no class no idea how i'm allowed into this broadcast i have no class uh eddie neat 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 uh thank you everybody uh, <laughs> trying to move the market higher uh as we go oh man um Yep, uh, Peloton stock bounces, headline says, as J.P. Morgan analyst slashes price target but still sees considerable upside. Uh, it's a conflicting kind of message, isn't it? We're up 83 on the Dow. We're down 6 on S&P, down 130 on NASDAQ at the moment. 406.77 on Goldman, down 74 cents. Rocket Lab is down 7, 47 cents. SoFi is still down 34. GameStop still down 580. Matterport down 97 cents. Uh, ME down 22, Spire down 23, ATIP up a half a penny, Smart Rent down 9, Sixtera down 2. Very little movement on, on some of these issues at the moment. That uh, that's, the, that's the story here. Uh, we're, a gr we're grinding today. We are grinding today. Sean, uh, hey crew, uh, house two. I find the NIC movie clips spill it out for me when I'm looking for when I'm still for I'm still now thing. I no idea what this means. I don't understand what that's what that means. Uh, uh, can you do a class on how you pick your stocks? Uh, did that uh, class number number ten? Is that number ten or number nine? Bobby, check it out. Um, hunt uh, a hunt of the Holy Grail knights that say ni nee, a rub. Um, the knights who say ni nee, a bw uncle B with a lot of folks on here maybe new or just have not pulled the trigger on rights or sells and just accumulating shares maybe an hour class on common um ws terms and market lingo uh that might be the way to go uh sean and wendy the knights who say neat monty python and the holy grail um uh, there you go there you go <laughs> uh yeah, already. Uh, neat is the magic word. Uh, 407.30 on Goldman, down 18 cents. A little recovery there. The Dow still down 75. S&P down 6. NASDAQ down 129. Uh, AZ says, clearly, I have a lot to catch up on. Watching Monty and watching your class, Uncle Bruce. Ha uh ha, -huh, yes. You have work to do to catch up with this gang. I uh, must watch that. You must watch the movie Die Hard to have an inkling of what we're talking about here. False says, I think I may be part of the traders who say, oof, uh, Gaiotti, Sean and Wendy, guys, maybe search Monty Python Knights who say me or Monty Python Black Knight, and you'll find the clips that we keep referring to around here on the Knights that say me.
<laughs> and they're saying thank you shake it fry what thanks okay there you go uh <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh what can i say everybody thank you all for being here today thank you for the thumbs ups i've never seen die hard that's where i'm going wrong that's it you got to watch that movie class number seven is just us watching die hard for one and a half hours worth the price rob my dog staring at me, wondering why we haven't left for our walk yet. I tried to explain to her I have to write out nights of me quotes for Bruce and the gang. I can't yet leave. I have to do this. This is work I must done, must be done. It must get looked after. What can I say? <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. What can I say? That is the market. That is what's happening here as we keep working away on the today's markets. Thank you all for joining me with uh, your buddy Uncle Bruce on stock markets, plain English, trying to figure out just what, what's making sense. We have 409 thumbs ups now. Thank you for the 409 thumbs ups. That is awesome sauce. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Helps with the analytics, as I said before. It's really helping with the analytics, and it's terrific. <clears throat> all right. Uh, and to ease uh, into Monty Python and British humor, I'd recommend starting with a movie full of MP alums, uh, alums. Yes, Monty Python alumni, A Fish Called Wanda, for sure. Um, uh, Gaiotti, Rob, this is separate. This is what separates man from beast. Uh, BW plus Kevin Klein is awesome as Otto. Yes, British Schilling, don't call me stupid. Uh, Rob, uh, <laughs> new at... All-time low. Spire is at the new all-time low. Is that right? 327 last trade. Um, yes. All-time low trade on Spire right now. Time to put in sneak bids. 326, 321. See if you can scoop the cheapest trade of all time on Spire. A fish, a fish, and fishy fish. Um, BW, the English contribution to world cuisine. The chip. Um, Sean and Wendy, um, got it, y'all. Thanks, y'all. You're the best. British, uh, don't forget the fish. Um, <laughs> Coyote, see you guys for the next Spire all-time low tomorrow, says Coyote. <clears throat> BW, um, MTV, or yep, the chip. That's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, all-time low. Everyone's a loser. Everyone's a loser. And Rose uh, Sartucci, thank you, Rose, for your PayPal contribution to me. As Spire hits an all-time low, she makes a contribution to Jennifer and I on PayPal. That is, that is the ultimate, uh, the ultimate statement right there. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate you so much. BW Wanda, let me correct you on a couple of things, okay? Aristotle was not a Belgian. The central message of Buddhism is not every man for himself. <laughs> oh, man. Don't call me stupid. Uh, Emmy, uh, talk about a hit that all time low also. Will, did anyone watch the show Faulty Towers? That was hilarious. British sitcom. Uh, British shilling. BW, love it. Not seen it for years. British shilling. Will, grew up on these things. Rob, okay, okay, love you folks. See you all later for real. Uh, Oscar, I sold Spire long ago. Um, mediocre, the, the, the car, 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 the the car, the car, the car, the car, the the car, 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 the the low of Spire all time, down 24 and a half cents today, the Bargoon Day. Spire is on sale. That's all I can say. It's on sale. ATIP up one half a penny. Uh, it's green. Um, nothing else is green. Six zero down six. Smart rent down eight. That's what we have here. Uh, Rocket Lab down 54. The Dow up 69. And the S&P down six. NASDAQ down 127. <clears throat> That's what we got. Sean and Wendy. We'll see you all later, fam. Get some rest, Uncle Bruce. Hi there, Ed T. Chen. Uh, we'll be back here at 3 o'clock this afternoon, of course, for the final hour trading. Will Carruthers, Faulty Towers. Uh, yes, at Cleese at his finest. Uh, Will, British shilling. My parents had the VHS box set. <laughs> I can see why. Oh, yes. Uh, comedy, comedy, comedy. 
Um, absolutely. 78-point gain on the Dow now. Down 4.5 on S&P. We're down 118 on NASDAQ. Do I sense a little improvement? Maybe. That was me, a Rosie Posey. You're welcome. You've made me a lot more than that. Uh, thank you, Rosie Posey, for that donation on, on the PayPal uh, uh, donate button. That is awful kind of you, and uh, I'm glad to see that you're doing well. Keep it going. Just keep it coming. Fantastic. Make it happen. Will, great show. Thanks, Will. Uh, Larry, one of my faves is How to Irritate People by John Cleese, 1968. Look up the job interview skit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> The live show at the uh, Hollywood Bowl for uh, Monty Python. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They, they did a documentary just a couple of years ago. I'm wondering if it's on Prime or if it's on Netflix. The, the gang from, uh, from Monty Python, they did a, a reunion uh, live thing. And there was a special about the making of it and the performing of it. It was fantastic. A lot of behind the scenes stuff. Really funny, really enjoyable uh, with these guys. In just the last couple of years, they did this. British um, will uh, will all was always on the TV here. Now I have the DVD box set. Um, Larry, love that too. Uh, British, at last, at last, the 1948 show is great too. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Um, 76 point gain on the Dow. We're just kind of you know kind of working through here. What can I say? Uh, yeah, it's one of those days. Uh, Goldman, 406.25, down 123. Um, as we're watching contracts expire, just to grind out, uh, watching them grind out, grind out. And the market is a quiet one today uh, with uh, red arrows, but that might turn around in the last hour later today. We'll watch to see if there's bargoon hunting coming in, including on spire 327 and a half cents the low of the day 327 the low of all time 327 on spire ridiculously cheap absolutely uh anyone seen spam a lot spam 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 that's a great skit they have that one in the uh hollywood bowl uh version for sure well, there you have it, kids. I'm going to take off here. Um, we're going to uh, get ready to uh, rejoin you this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Don't forget tonight, 8 o'clock, prime time with Uncle Bruce for Gold Bagel members. Uh, join me tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to load up that show here in the next little while so that you can uh, save the link and join us later for that exclusive show tonight. Uh, so great to see you. Socius, hey, Simpletons, I've been a bit absent this week. What has happened to our stocks? Everything seems to be down all week. Cindy loves Spam a lot. British, yep, I saw that at the theater. Marcus Brickstock took the leading role. Larry Titus, uh, I don't like Spam. <laughs> it's a red day uh, on NASDAQ. It's a red day on um, S&P 500. Uh, we've been green almost all day on the Dow, but not a lot. Uh, we're up 0.2%. Uh, we're up a fifth of a percentage point on the Dow. We're not going anywhere today. We may have a, a pullback on the Dow later, or we may have a turnaround gain on NASDAQ later. We've been down a couple days in a row here. See how this all, you know, works itself out. So she spam. Uh, there you go. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Spire, all-time low at 327 today. It's 327.7. It's right near its all-time low. Incredibly cheap, but that's what it's doing. Can't uh, can't argue that. Um, not much to say there. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, join me today at 3 o'clock Eastern time and 8 o'clock tonight. And we'll be back. Uh, rest easy, Uncle Bruce. I'll be surfing up here in Tofino midday. Snow on the ground. Oh, my gosh. Yikes, man. Um, you, are of a, you are of a different uh, gene pool than I am. <laughs> I couldn't handle that. Thanks, Will, for being here. Thank you, Socius Larry Titus, British Shilling, Cindy, BW. Thank you, um, uh, Will. Of course, Rosie Posey, thank you. Double thank you to you. Sean and Wendy, thank you. Mediocre Oscar, Rob, uh, Smoke Dog, thank you. Guillaume, um, Mediocre Bobby Atkinson, thank you for being here. All of you. British Shilling, of course. Fall 798, thank you. Shaky Fry One, AZ. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Bobby Atkinson, Eddie, Pat, Pat, you know, Eddie P. EP, thanks, Matt. DQ, thank you. Chicago Transit, thank you. NTPC, as always, thank you for being here. Um, Guillaume, Larry, of course. I think I'm saying the same words, the same members again and again. But again and again, thank you, Scott. Thank you, everybody. 
We'll see you this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Okay, guys, uh, you take care. Uh, stay healthy. Have a good one, everybody. Share, shred that GNAR. Uh, Larry, true story, spam. Email kind is so named because of the Monty Python skit. Cam, thanks, Uncle B. Uh, Ori, thank you. Giotti, good show, Uncle B. Thank you, guys, for being here. We'll see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon and at 8 o'clock tonight. As in the language of Monty Python, uh, BW, is it wrong that I work and watch? I love it. I Thanks, Uncle B. It's not wrong. It's bright. It's the right thing to do. It's what you must do. See you later, guys. <laughs>